First Baptist Powell believes that a healthy disciple is one who gathers with the body of Christ, grows in the grace of Christ, and goes with the gospel of Christ. We encourage you to join us for worship Sundays at 1015 a.m. and learn more about how you can be involved in the life and ministry of our church at fbcpowell.org. Andrew Rogers back here on the Eagle Sports Network with the defensive scouting report. Offensive lineman Colt Siner says moving the ball consistently against an inconsistent Erskine defense is doing what the team has been able to do, run the football all year long. Uh, just being able to get the snap and being able to consistently um, just run the offense that we've always been running and being able to uh, just pound the rock and move it around. With last week being self-inflicted mistakes, Siner believes that gives the team confidence heading into this week's matchup. That, that is a very big confidence we have since we did have a lot of yards addition with all the turnovers we did have and knowing that we're a good football team just can't shoot ourselves in the foot. The Eagles will attack an Erskine defense that was gashed for over 300 rushing yards last week in a loss against Mars Hill. They do have a very big interior defensive line that uh, will probably be an uh, area that we will probably have to exploit, but uh, their DVs are very well coached and we'll have to exploit that in another way as well, and just being able to get the ball outside is probably going to be one of our big things. When we come back, the voice of the Eagles, Adam Cavalier and Michael Watchering break things down as we continue to count you down to kickoff here on the Eagles Sports Network. TriLight is proud to support Carson Newman Athletics. We salute the student athletes who are working hard to make great things happen on the field, in the classroom, and in the world. It takes vision, commitment, and teamwork, qualities we share at TriLight. Our mission is to provide life-changing opportunities by building a world-class fiber broadband network. If you'd like to learn more, please visit TriLight.net or call us at 833-847-0824. If you're looking for official Eagle merchandise, look no further than the Carson Newman Bookstore. With a large selection of Carson Newman gifts and apparel, you're sure to find something to please the entire family. From stuffed eagles to towel sets, sweatshirts, shorts, hats, and slippers, we literally have you covered from head to toe. We have just the item you're looking for no matter what the season. So whether you're an Eagle student, parent, alumni, or fan, shop us for everything orange and blue. Call 865-471-3539 for more information and store hours. We'll see you at the Carson Newman Bookstore. Derek Evans, 79 yards on the first play from scrimmage. You found the home of Carson Newman football on the Eagles Sports Network. It's payday, and on payday, you want to have access to your money right away. When you enroll for direct deposit at Knoxville TVA Employees Credit Union, your money comes to you with no waiting. It's the fastest and most secure way to get paid. Getting set up is easy. All you need is your account number and our routing number. Find out more at tvacreditunion.com. Join us. Join us now. Federally insured by NCUA. Some restrictions apply. Ask for details. Hey, folks, you're on with Ted Russell Nissan. Two cheeseburgers, two medium fries, any two drinks of your choice. Tea, coffee, or soft drink. Just Whoa, cut. Gerald, wrong script. I thought something sounded wrong. Here we go. Brand new Ultimas, Rogues, Pathfinders, Maximus, Frontiers, all in stock. Ted Russell Nissan on Kingston Pike. Hey, folks, Gerald Anderson with Ted Russell Nissan. This week, russet potatoes are on sale. Ground beef, just a pound. Thumb and good watermelon. Whoa, 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 Gerald, wrong script. Here we go. Ted Russell Nissan, Ultimas, Rogues, Pathfinders, Maximus, Frontiers, all new and in stock. Ted Russell Nissan on Kingston Pike. All right, back at Burke Tar Stadium, Adam Cavalier, Michael Watrang. Just delighted that you've elected to spend part of your Saturday with us here on the Eagles Sports Network. Carson Newman set to square off with the flying fleet of Erskine. And first ever meeting between these two teams. Erskine had a football team up until 1951. Pretty good one at that. Beat Florida State, handed the Seminoles their only loss in 1948. But then dropped the program in 51. Announced it was coming back in 18. Starts back up in 2021, that COVID season. Got a win over Barton in the first game out. Winless against SAC opposition since. And Michael Watrang Erskine. So far this season has troubled, struggled to move the football. Uh, three straight eight weeks, all below 200 yards of offense for the Flying Fleet. A chance for Carson Newman's defense to key in. Yeah, 
You wonder how Carson Newman can handle this team that has struggled this year and certainly for the Eagles after last week when they were exposed early and never could quite get on track until the middle of that second quarter and by that point it was a big deficit and Carson Newman couldn't right the ship in time. How does Carson Newman come out in this ball game? It's a night game here on this Saturday evening. Good atmosphere expected here at Burktar Stadium and you know the defense wants to set the tone because in some of the losses this season the point total has been significantly higher than is up to their standards, and I'm sure that they would like to have one of those knock down, drag them out defensive efforts where they dominate their side of the ball. Then some ex extraneous motivators. You alluded to it in a night game. Uh, these really don't exist in the month of October historically for Carson Newman football. Carson Newman's played at night in October just twice this century. But those were those old CSTV, CSS Thursday night specials. Eagles picked up wins over Mars Hill and Catawba in that situation. Carson Newman hasn't played a night game at home in the month of October on a Saturday since 1984. So that's special. Uh, the response to the black jerseys from the players, really good. Seemed to motivate them. We'll see if that extraneous motivator can pay off. Well, here's the biggest thing for Carson Newman when you look at the schedule and, and the way that things have broken out this year. It's been maybe a performance that they they have not been as proud about then they come back with a nice performance and then there's a tough game in there and then they get back on track that's the next step for this program and this unit is to find ways to play consistently week to week and where it stands right now you look at a home matchup against Erskine back-to-back -back road games there's not a lot of time to get this thing back on track this year and certainly you don't want to go through another offseason like you had last year where there's a lot of potential, a lot of what-ifs, but you have to wait an entire year to get back onto the football field. If you can get right tonight, can you be consistent over the next two weeks to enter the final month of the year and give yourselves a chance for that divisional spot? The, the good news for Carson Newman, the level of difficulty, uh, it only goes down, and that's not a knock to the flying fleet. I suppose that's just reality. Carson Newman's played the 10th toughest schedule in the country. Uh, really, Franklin, Franklin Pierce is the only team that Carson Newman has faced uh, that uh, has a losing record. Everybody else is, at worst, a two-loss team. Uh, and there's a bunch of one-loss teams I in the mix in that. Uh, but the, com the combined finish of the schedule has a winning percentage combined of 389. So these are some chances for Carson Newman to uh, show some growth toward the back half of the year. And then, yeah, can you sneak in – that conference championship game. Nearly got some help today from Wise uh, with an upset of Tusculum uh, over at Carl Smith Stadium in Virginia. But the Pioneers held serve there. But some adversity internally. Carson Newman's running back room really dinged up. Tyler Curtis, and he's got a banged up shoulder, is about the only one that's full tilt healthy, and that's, that's generous. T.J. King's battling turf toe. Tyree Nelson is not dressed today. Jalon Pearson's battled some leg injuries. Uh, Vontae Brackett has a deep bone bruise. Uh, this is not a healthy running back room uh, on display today. Yeah, but the good thing is, is Carson Newman has not only had depth this season, but they've utilized all of their running backs. So it's not like you're getting to a point in the depth chart where players are going to go on the field and they're not used to being on the football field. There has been that depth. There has been that capability for a lot of these guys to be out there. And as you mentioned, other than Nelson, everybody's at the very least in uniform and will try to give it a go. And maybe for that running back group, you talk about guys being dinged up, maybe this is an opportunity for one of those players to stand up and step out of that rotational role and say, I should be the every down back and get the majority of the carries, and this is the kind of game in which you could certainly do that. Certainly have to have ball security in mind, uh, and that's, uh, of course, a topic of conversation following the five-turner day, turnover day against Tusculum uh, last Saturday. Going up against a... Uh, Erskine team that does lead the South Atlantic Conference in turnovers forced. Uh, and so uh, can't have a repeat performance of that. That's what's kept Erskine in games against Wingate, against Lenore Rhine, uh, against Mars Hill, opponent giveaways. Yeah, there's no question about it. Certainly when you do that for Carson Newman, um, you make self-inflicted mistakes. You put yourselves behind the sticks. There's even things that don't show up on the – on the uh, the play sheet that sometimes 
you wonder, would, would that have been a difference in the ball game? And when you're Carson Newman and you're dealing with a little bit of a margin of error, that's exactly what you're trying to take care of. And if Carson Newman can play a clean 60 minutes of football, that would certainly go a long way to this team finding that consistency that we referenced. It's Carson Newman and Erskine on the docket today from Burke Tar Stadium. Mike Clowney's pregame thoughts head your way when we come back after this on the Eagle Sports Network. Insurance, it's about people, not things. It's about security. It's about confidence. It's about relationships. It's about trust. It's about you. As a local independent agent, Bible Insurance Agency can design an insurance program that's just right for you and your family. Give the people you love safe, sound, and secure protection from auto owners insurance. Call Bible Insurance Agency, 423-586-4320. Or go by 1600 East Andrew Johnson Highway in Morristown. Domino's Pizza in Jefferson City has deals for Carson Newman students. Bring in your valid student ID when you order for pickup or delivery and Domino's Domino's in Jefferson City will give you a steaming hot large one-topping pizza for $4.99. That's a large one-topping pizza for Carson Newman students for $4.99 at Domino's in Jeff City. Call 865-471-6700 to order. That's 865-471-6700. Domino's, the official pizza of the Carson Newman Eagles. An interview with head coach Mike Cloudy heads your way in 60 seconds on the Eagle Sports Network. Drive safer longer when you visit your local Michelin dealer, Fleet Tire, for a set of Michelin Defender Tires. Michelin is the brand drivers turn to for tire options that deliver a safe, quiet, and comfortable ride. Fleet Tire, Woodland Avenue, exit 1B, Knoxville. Based on internal wet braking results, versus Goodyear Assurance Comfort Tread tires and third-party wear test results versus Continental ProTrack tires with Eco Plus. See Manufacturer's Limited Warranty Book for details. Fleet Tire, Woodland Avenue. Premier Building Maintenance Corporation. That name means excellence. For over a quarter of a century, the Premier team delivers service with pride, personal responsibility in delivering excellence. And they also back the Ken Spark Scholarship Fund, so that a deserving student may be able to enjoy a great Christian education at Carson Newman. For more information, go to cneagles.com. That's cneagles.com. Backed and helped by Premier Building Maintenance Corporation. Time to check in with the Eagles head man. Here's head coach Mike Clowney alongside the voice of the Eagles, Adam Cavalier. All right, back on the AEC countdown to kick off. Carson Newman at night, at home, in the month of October for the first time in 12 years. The Eagles taking on the Erskine Flying Fleet for the first time in program history. I'm Adam Cavalier alongside Carson Newman head football coach Mike Clowney. Mike, uh, there's a lot different in this one. Um, some aesthetic things. You're wearing black jerseys. Uh, debuted to the team about two hours before kick for the first time ever playing at night for the first time in a decade got a little buzz uh, uh, about this one thanks to some I guess, I guess unique marketing opportunities <laughs> probably timing more than anything <laughs> else but um, yeah it, 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 there's a unique buzz that's something that you know the big thing you know is always try to create an environment for you kids that's fun and productive and so like that's something that I'm hoping tonight we'll be able to do the uh, the game you go up against an Erskine team that is largely uh, trying to find its way. They're bottom of the conference in total offense, uh, but defensively, uh, they lead the league in turnover margin uh, and do some things that have caused problems. What's it take to recover after a game against Tusculum where you had turnover issues? You know, the big thing hopefully we've worked on this week is just make sure we cover the football, take care of it the way we need to. I think our guys have done a good job at least communicating, challenging one another. You know, it's one thing that you always want within the program is accountability within the team. And so you hear guys at practice reminding one another, hey, man, take care of the football, squeeze it, get your elbow down. You know, and sometimes it still gets old, but it's something that's so important that we have to make sure that we make an emphasis of it every time we touch the football. Throughout this season, uh, this team has done a – pretty strong do job of growing week to week and I would argue that even in the loss to Tusculum growth was still there also uh, you had to stare at some shotgun blast to a foot while looking at that growth so it might not be as obvious uh, what's the next step for this team to recover from 
uh, some of those blasts while uh, looking to maintain that upward uh, climb that it's been doing all year long. You know, you're never going to play mistake free, but the thing that we got to be able to do today is, you know, eliminate critical errors um, to where got things that create big plays, a big problem for us, you know, which is the big play defensively, you know, taking care of the football offensively. You know, I think the big thing is putting the full game together, offense, defense, and special teams, I think is a big, big critical error point for us today. Adam Cavalier alongside Carson Newman head football coach Mike Clowney Erskine. Uh, truly a two quarterback system. Bryce Jeffcoat, when he's in the game, he's throwing it. Austin Parker, when, when he's in the game, he's thrown it a tenth of the times that Jeffcoat has, but has run it ten times as much as Jeffcoat has. Is that something to worry about? Cause for concern? What's your attitude toward the two quarterback system that Chap Boyd deploys? You know, it's a cause for awareness more than anything. Just kind of our kids knowing that, you know, who's in the game and, you know, what their strengths are and making sure that we play to those. The Eagles this season have taken to the air probably more than any other season since uh, Danny Sanders was slinging it back in the late 70s. Uh, a byproduct of the, the offensive style, but as a result, Braxton Westfield uh, is already in the top 15 for uh, a lot of season receiving categories. Uh, it, when you started this thing and here kind of just a scotch past the midpoint, was that the intent uh, or has that just been the natural progression of the course of this year? You know, that's just kind of the way things have happened. I'm, I'm a let's just score points guy in regards <laughs> to like how we get them. You know, the biggest thing we want to do is move, move the ball and put points on the board. All right, Mike Clowney, pleasure as always. Good luck today against the Flying Fleet. Thank you. Scar Stuman head football coach Mike Clowney. Starting lineups, keys to the game, weather report. All headed your way when the AEC countdown to kickoff comes back after this on the Eagle Sports Network. Decades ago, your local electric co-op was formed to make sure everyone who needed electricity had it. And as time went on, as our communities continued to grow, so did the need for electricity. And time and time again, we've made certain that need has been met. Today, we're still doing everything in our power to keep affordable, reliable electricity flowing. It was our purpose then, it's our purpose now, and that'll never change. AEC, your local Touchstone Energy Cooperative. When you're sick and tired of fast food and need a fresh home-cooked meal, turn to Lisa's Country Kitchen. Lisa's been cooking up her fresh, never-frozen food for the Lakeway area for more than 15 years. Lisa's cares about her customers. You may enter a stranger, but you'll leave a friend. From footlong hot dogs to juicy steaks, Lisa's has the best food for the best prices. Lisa's Country Kitchen on Route 92 off Old Andrew Johnson Highway. The best food for the best prices. What a grip and a rip by Des Farrell. You're locked in to Carson Newman football on the Eagle Sports Network. First Baptist Church of Powell is a gospel-centered community who loves God and others. We exist by the grace of God for the glory of God. And that is the ultimate purpose in all that we do. First Baptist Powell believes that a healthy disciple is one who gathers with the body of Christ, grows in the grace of Christ, and goes with the gospel of Christ. We encourage you to join us for worship Sundays at 1015 a.m. and learn more about how you can be involved in the life and ministry of our church at fbcpowell.org. It's payday, and on payday, you want to have access to your money right away. When you enroll for direct deposit at Knoxville TVA Employees Credit Union, your money comes to you with no waiting. It's the fastest and most secure way to get paid. Getting set up is easy. All you need is your account number and our routing number. Find out more at tvacreditunion.com. Join us. Join us now. Federally insured by NCUA. Some restrictions apply. Ask for details. AM 620, WRJZ, Knoxville. You are listening to the flagship station for Carson Newman football. AM 620, WRJZ, Knoxville. This is Carson Newman football. Turner to the 40, the 30. Turner to the 20. Nobody's going to catch Vernon Turner. 80 yards, a touchdown on the first play of the game. Vernon Turner has Carson Newman up 6 to nothing. 128 All-Americans. Williams, house call. Touchdown, Carson Newman. 21 sack titles. He throws down into the end zone, wide open. Touchdown, Carson Newman, Alvin Sanders. Five national championships. That's it from Wilberforce, Ohio, and...
and Carson Newman will play for the national championship. One legendary history. And I think if we will become that one, then we will be number one in the South Atlantic Conference, and we'll be number one in the nation, and we'll be number one in God's heart. This is Carson Newman Football on the Eagles Sports Network. Once the Today's game is brought up. to you in part by Appalachian Electric Cooperative, Domino's, Aramark, by ShopCNEagles.com, The Eagle Club, The Bible Insurance Agency, by Pepsi, The Tennessee National Guard, by Magaha Electric, Inner Digital, by Food City, Trilight, Quality Suites of Morristown, and by Lisa's Country Kitchen. Now, here's the voice of the Eagles, Adam Cavalier. Just delighted to welcome you back atop Burke Tar Stadium, where Carson Newman is lined up, and the Eagles are awaiting the entrance video to finish rolling before making their way onto the field as it plays over the video board. Adam Cavalier, Michael Watrang, happy to have you along. Let's send it down to the sidelines. Check in with Leander Carey for today's weather report. Thanks, Adam. Uh, after a beautiful 75 degree, mostly sunny fall day, we've got a slightly cloudy, uh, cooling evening for tonight. A few showers should happen early on in this game, and it's been raining on and off for the last um, uh, half hour or so. It's 74 degrees right now, and that should drop by about 10 degrees to about 64 degrees by the last whistle. Winds are light, uh, 5 to 10 miles per hour west southwest and the chance of rain is just 40 percent so hopefully that clears up soon back to you all right thank you very much leanda carson newman comes streaming onto the field through the cross as max melton conducts the pregame coin toss and unbelievably for a sixth consecutive week carson newman or seventh consecutive week carson newman has won the toss chances of that happening 0.7 percent for a team to win the toss in seven consecutive weeks. So Erskine's going to get the football first. Eagles will be on defense after deferring. Michael Watrang, your, your keys in this one. The biggest key to the game in, in this one for Carson Newman is get off to a good start in all three phases. And if you look back at last week, defense, first two plays, excellent, great A. That third play, though, they give up a scramble to Simmons. He sprints 70-plus yards for a touchdown. Offense comes out, no momentum there. Boom, you're du you've dug yourselves a hole. You're in a very bad spot. You're struggling. You got to come out with a little bit more excitement and enthusiasm in this contest and see if you can put some things together early on in this one. And if Carson Newman can do that, let's have a shot to get an early lead and hold on to it throughout the rest of the contest. Carson Newman, all black jerseys for the first time in school history while Erskine, white tops, maroon pants, gold helmets with the Flying Fleet logo adorning them. So Carson Newman looking for a fast start. Ivan Corbin, the nod at quarterback. And the Eagles will likely rely on him, his arm, his legs today against a flying fleet team that has struggled at times to stop the run. 182 yards allowed on the ground per game for Erskine. But it's going to be the fleet offense that gets the football first. So the fleet... Sending one man deep to receive it, and it's Travaris Walker. He's back at his five to receive this Christian Irwin Kip, and it is a blustery day here on the banks of Mossy Creek. Flags flapping mightily in the breeze. So Irwin has it teed up. Between the hashes, rises, raises his right hand, strides forward, 
left toe to leather and drives an end over end kick to Walker at the one. He'll bring it out from between the hashes. Heads right, cut back left across the 20. Squiggles through a tackle in the boundary right side and gets up to the 25 yard line for a 24 yard return where he's brought down by Kanan Vanderberg. One of the rare times this season where the opening kickoff or any kickoff for Carson Newman's kickoff coverage unit has not reached the end zone. And the Eagles, nevertheless, start off defensively at the 25-yard line. And here comes this group. And let's see how Carson Newman handles an Erskine team that has struggled offensively the last several weeks. Bryce Jeffcoat is in the gun to start for the Flying Fleet. A wide out to the right, two to the wide side left. Cato, the running back to his left. Jeffcoat takes, rolls the pocket left, pressured, throws left. That is bobbled and complete to Walker up at the 30-yard line, and he's muscled out of bounds by Alonzo Houston after a six-yard gain, second and four. Well, that was a nice catch out there on the sideline by Isaiah. It almost looked like the magical Mr. Mosopheles. As that ball nearly slipped through his hands, I think it got wedged in between his face mask there. Very nice catch in space and a good work there on the opening down. Second down, four to go. Left hash for the fleet at their own 31-yard line. Jeff Coat out of the pistol. And flags blow this play dead. A false start. Erskine offensive line clearly didn't go to Dong's martial arts studio. Poor reaction time there out of the Full fleet start front four. On the offense, number 53. Philly's five yards. Still second down. So Omar Holland, the culprit there. Certainly at Dong's Martial Arts Studio, you you have a lot of emphasis on balance. Not the case there, and that puts him basically nearly behind the sticks after a good gain on first down. Great establishment in Wilson, North Carolina. Good location, too. Great location right before Barton Stadium. Second down, nine to go for the fleet. Left hash at their own 26-yard line. Jeff Coat out of the pistol, turns, hands off. Parker, right side, stretches it out to the right, gets across the 30, up over the hashes to the 32-yard line before he's wrestled down by Alonzo Houston. A gain of, call it six up to the 32. Third down, three to go for the Flying Fleet. And third down has been an adventure for Erskine. Five of 13 last week against Mars Hill. The previous four weeks, there were six of 42 on third downs. Third down, three to go for the Fleet, right hash, Throw 32. Jeff Coat all by his lonesome in the gun. Takes the snap, going to throw long, left side. Well, split the difference incomplete. No clue who that was in intended to. Lyles was the closest man there, but such a late breaking pattern in the Eagles defense holds with the three and out. It was four wide receivers, two to each side, and the middle receivers were running seam patterns. And that ball almost looked like it slipped out of Jeff Coat's hands. That was a Dying duck down the football field. Carson Newman's defense hold three and out to start the game. And that's the start that this group exactly needed after last week's start. And now gives the offense potentially some good field position. So Erskine on to punt. And Gravely will roll right and boot it away. And this will bounce in front of Jalon Pearson. And be downed over the sack logo by the fleet at the 27-yard line. So a decent kick. And the Eagles take over first and 10 at their own 27. Eagle fans, AEC is your touchstone energy cooperative. Service you can trust, value you can depend on. Powering Mossy Creek where AEC member owned and service driven. Erskine looking like a flailing fluffer nutter on the first possession. Eagles. Force the three and out, take over first and 10 at their own 27. Corbin is in the gun with Vontae Brackett to his right. Takes the snap, rolls right. Corbin pumps, chucks to the right sideline. That is over top of everybody and incomplete. The intended target, Jalon Pearson at the 30. Gadsden had coverage on him, but way long second and 10. Carson Newman trying to activate their front fun quadrant. Sorry, can't read the uh, the handwriting on some of these notes that I wrote down here. 
And uh, it's not a bad decision, though, by by Corbin. It was, a, it was a comeback route from Westfield and a corner route. Really threw it to the only place that he had a chance, and that was Pearson deep down the field. Trips to the short side left, one to the wide side right on second and ten. It's a screen to the right for Pearson and dropped it. It's an incomplete pass, mercifully, instead of a loss of five. Pearson did not have numbers that way, and it's third and ten. Not the start that potentially the Eagles would have envisioned for themselves offensively. Well, that pass right there has shown maybe the inefficiencies that this passing game has had at times. Corbin just needed to lay that one out there a little softer, allow Pearson to make the grab, and then sprint up the field. Instead, it was too much of a laser pass, and now back-to-back -back passes, third and long. Third and ten for the Eagles. Left hash at their own 27, trying to avoid the three and out. No score, 12-37 to play first quarter. And before we get there, flags fly, blowing this one dead. Full start on the offense, number 59. Phillies five yards, still third down. So back it up. To the 22 yard line, third and 15 now for Carson Newman. Corbin on third and 15, back to pass. Settles right, now races left. Corbin escaping men in the backfield and gets upfield for positive yardage, but he's well shy of the sticks. Brought down by Samuel up at the 29 yard line. Gain of seven and a three and out both ways. Tough right there for Corbin because it's a long developing pattern. And you have some of the defenders that are almost like cats saying meow underneath, just trying to entice you to chase after the ball. And then eventually there's no space open up for the pass. Kraft back to punt, gets off a whirly gigging kick. Fair catch signaled for by Lee, but he'll let it roll past him. And what a roll it is along the left sideline, inside the 10, along the numbers, all the way down to the six yard line. A dandy of a kick for Nate Kraft. There's a flag on the play back at the 42. But it does track at present standing as a 62 yard blast if it stands. Hey, Eagle fans, Domino's is the official pizza of the Carson Newman Eagles. When you're hungry, reach for Domino's. Get a large one topping pie for $6.99 with your Carson Newman ID. Domino's, the official pizza of the Carson Newman Eagles. During the kick, holding on the receiving team, number 17. A penalty will be enforced from the end of the kick. It'll be first down. So holding on the flying fleet, back it up. Half the distance to the goal as we see some umbrellas popping out here at Burktar Stadium. Look at the forecast yesterday. Uh, the, meteor the meteorologist Jenna Tull said no chance of rain. But today, there's some precipitation in the forecast. Yeah, it's interesting because south of us looks great. Looks like your nice fall day. Instead, to the north, there's a lot of rain over there. First and 10 flying fleet right hash at their own three yard line. Jeff Coat takes play action, throws long over the numbers right side. That's complete to Walker. Walker inside the 50, and Jalen Anderson will run him down and rip off his face mask. So a big field position flipping play for the Flying Fleet. They get it along the right sideline with play action to set up in Carson Newman territory on a well-thrown ball that Jalen Anderson was able to catch up with Walker and bring him down. Well, the rain has started a little bit, so that makes it a little bit harder to throw the ball. Personal foul, baseman, on defense, number one. Philly's 15 yards, automatic first down. So move it all the way down to the 28-yard line of Carson Newman. No score with 11.35 to play in the first quarter. Erskine looking for its first lead in five weeks. That was a really good throw by Jeff Coat. After he was very inaccurate on the opening drive on third down, Carson Newman's defense, despite having him in the shadows of their own goalpost, now near the red zone. Trips to the left, the wide side for the fleet. 
Parker takes the handoff from Jeffcoat, picks his way to the right side of the line, and nothing there for him. He's ridden down by David Alexander down at the 25-yard, 26-yard line, a two-yard gain to bring up second and eight. You have to keep Carson Newman honest with some of those run plays up the middle. Parker listed at just a buck 65. So his game is more of the sprint game, speed game, out on the edges. Before we get things rolling, officials blow the whistle. Get the word for Max Melton teams are heading to their huddles as if it's a timeout. Didn't get official word from Max Melton. DeAndre Williams late getting off the field, potentially an injury timeout, and that is the case. So everything good. And it'll be first or second and eight for the Flying Fleet. Right hash at their own, at the Eagle 26 yard line, looking to dent the scoreboard first with 10.40 to play in the first quarter. Jeff Coat out of the gun. Claps his hands, takes the snap. Three step drop, steps up in the pocket, pressured right, chucks it to the right sideline. Back shoulder throw Parker, got his hands to it, but landed out of bounds. Incomplete, well covered by Alonzo Houston down at the 10 yard line. Tough play, nearly worked for the Flying Fleet. The uh, official on the far sideline threw his hat off, so that would have indicated that he was, say, he had stepped out of bounds prior to that. But he almost looked like the tree wizard there, being able to climb the ladder, get all the way up to the apex of the ball, and nearly make the catch. Third down, eight to go for the fleet. Right hash at the Eagle 26. Let's not forget Erskine, a team that has not attempted a field goal all year. Play action. Hitch, right side, Walker, incomplete. Well defensed by Jalen Anderson at the 20. Not sure it would have been good enough for the first down. But the Eagles defense stands tall. Decision time for Shat Boyd and company with fourth and eight. Well, if you haven't attempted a field goal all season, why would you try a 42-yarder at this point in the season, it's particularly with a little bit of drizzle happening around the football field here? And Carson Newman's defensive backs, despite being burnt on that first play, they realize that the deep game isn't probably going to hurt them frequently today. So Alec, or Anderson rather stayed all over that. Fourth and eight for the fleet. Right hash at the Eagle 26. Two wide each way, no score, 10-22 to play. First quarter, Jeff Coat from the pistol, claps his hands, takes the snap. As time throws, middle of the field, too tall, incomplete. The intended target, Yong Lee, but it was flung over his head. And the Eagles defense holds tight on the doorstep of the red zone. Eagles get the football back. Really, the player that made that was Jake Cottle, the linebacker. He got depth in his zone defense. That forced Jeff Coat to try to throw the ball up and over the top of that. It was always going to be a difficult pitch and catch, and Cottle able to hang out underneath that and ensure that it goes for an incompletion. Carson Newman got to get back to running the football here on this drive. 10-17 first quarter, no score. Corbin does just that handoff. Jalon Pearson straight ahead, a hop, skip, and a jump for him. Up to the 30-yard line over the left hash. is a four-yard tote before he runs into Carter Vest. Gain of four to bring up second and six. Well, you're seeing, we talked about Carson Newman's depth at running back. Pearson's been out there for every play, basically, so you realize that he's probably one of the top options in this one. Corbin out of the gun, second and six. Zone read, keeper left side. Corbin caught, escapes, wiggles his way forward, and is lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. McClurk and the man that stopped him. No gain, third down, six to go. That's a really good play by McClurk, and the play design was to have the receiver, Westfield, come down, make that block, and then that way it would be Corbin one-on-one -on -one against the cornerback. Instead, McClurk can undercut it like an excellent safety would, and he makes a nice open field tackle to make this third in mid-range. Third and six for the Eagles, left hash at their own 30-yard line. Pistol look for Corbin. Takes the snap, throws left sideline. That's complete for first down yardage. Up at the 37 yard line, uh, out to Westfield is hauled in and Harfield immediately ushers him out up at the 37. Needed six, got seven. First down for the Eagles. That play is going to be there all day long. Erskine's corners are about seven to 10 yards off of the football. You can run those hitches and out routes all day. No score. First quarter, nine minutes to play. Eagles on the move. It's a handoff straight ahead. 
for Jalon Pearson. He's pinging off of bodies, still on his feet, up to midfield. And a flag on the play. Good for 12 yards and a first down if it stands. Gadsden wrangled him down. Well, the flag came from the back judge. It landed just above the eyebrow of the Eagles. Uh, well, do Eagles have eyebrows? That's a good question. <laughs> Face mask on the defense, number 15. Philly's 15 yards, automatic first down. Do Eagles have eyebrows? That's one of those good existential questions. You ask like, if you're at the zoo and there's monkeys about, which one of them flung something? That's an ex existential question that, you know, you, you don't, you're not sure if you can work in. You're not sure that you can work in. I think in. you have to, though. That's <laughs> the point of the, the whole situation. First and 10 Eagles, right hash at the 35 of Erskine. The handoff goes to the right side to Tyler Curtis, and he drives his way to the right sideline and is brought down by... Jalen Harfield, after now they spot it uh, just a yard upfield at the 34. Okay, not sure about that one. First and 10, or second and nine, pardon me. No score, eight minutes, seven seconds left first quarter. Eagles on the move on this drive. Corbin from the pistol. Double barrel with three wide. Counter, right side. Curtis lowers his shoulder, stays on his feet across the 30, and drives his way to the right sideline, out of bounds, inside the 25, down at the 22, Jamari Smith, the guy that pushes him out, but still good enough for 12 yards for Tyler Curtis and a first down. Carson Newman pulls both the left guard and left tackle. Christian Jones did a good job of setting the edge, but he's got to get upfield a little bit more. If he gets another block, could be a touchdown. First and 10, Eagles, right hash at the Erskine 22. Corbin, option left. Erskine has it bottled up, and Corbin is sent to the surface by Jeremiah Jennings in the backfield, back at the 26-yard line. A loss of four, second and 14. It's about as good as you can defend any kind of option play. Jennings had the quarterback, safety over the top, had the running back, I think that was Jarvis McClurkin out there. And those two did a fine job orchestrating that and now forces Carson Newman into a second and long. Second and 14 for the Eagles. Left hash at the Fleet 26. Double barrel shotgun with Meeks in motion toward the line. Now back out to the wide side right. Give us on the dive to Jalon Pearson and nothing there for him. Maybe a yard over the left hash is down to the 25 yard line, but he ran square into Jaheim Scott a one-yard gain, third down and 13 to go now for the Eagles. Carson Newman was hoping that they could get maybe four to five yards on that play, make it third and manageable. Instead, third and long. This is in the range of Nate Kraft, but that's been an adventure this year. Third down, 13 to go. Handoff goes straight ahead to Tyler Curtis. Curtis piles his way forward over the left hash. He's inside the 20, down to the 17-yard line, wrestled down by Jamari Smith after an eight-yard gain. Fourth down and... Five to go for Carson Newman. 6-12 to play first quarter, no score. Hey, Eagle fans, Lisa's Country Kitchen serves the best home-cooked meals that the Lakeway region has to offer. Lisa's Country Kitchen, the official restaurant of the Carson Newman Eagles. Fourth and five for Carson Newman. T.J. King is into the game with Curtis in the backfield. Corbin takes, going to throw the right sideline. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Carson Newman. Braxton Westfield on a free play. Got it with two hands in the end zone. And the Eagles light the lamp first with 5.51 to go in the first quarter at 6 0. Excellent work there. Good hard count, first of all. Great work by the offensive line and everybody on offense holding their water. Man jumps into the neutral zone. Corbin, a veteran savvy move. Take a shot to the end zone. And that's great work by Braxton Westfield. Excellent adjustment in midair. Gets to the pylon and makes a good catch and a toe tap. And Carson Newman going for it on fourth down. Pays off. 6-0 Eagles leading and now... Nate Kraft on for the PAT attempt. Snap back, hold down, Kraft's kick. Blasts off the K-Sack. 7-0, Eagles the opening advantage. 5.51 to play in the first quarter. We come back after this on the Eagles Sports Network. 
Hey folks, Gerald, that's with Ted Russell Nissan. Listen to me. Full details, just $79. $79 for a full detail? I ain't lying. Our detail shop will detail your car for just $79. Well, what about new vehicle inventory? We got them. Ultimus, Pathfinders, Maximus, Frontiers, even brand new Rogues, all in stock. And remember, you always get top dollar for your trade. Slipping, dripping, skipping, rocking, knocking, it don't matter. Even wrecked with a bad car fax. Just bring that sled to Ted right here in beautiful West Knox alone. Keep stood by. Drive safer longer when you visit your local Michelin dealer, Fleet Tire, for a set of Michelin Defender tires. Michelin is the brand drivers turn to for tire options that deliver a safe, quiet, and comfortable ride. Fleet Tire, Woodland Avenue, exit 1B, Knoxville. Based on internal wet braking results versus Goodyear Assurance Comfort Tread tires and third-party wear test results versus Continental Pro Track tires with Eco Plus. See Manufacturer's Limited Warranty Book for details. Fleet Tire, Woodland Avenue. Five fifty-one to play, first quarter, seven nothing. Carson Newman leads Erskine. Now, you know, Watrain, you're not a father. Uh, you're, you're just a cat dad right now. You, you know, sometimes you find some things as a dad. Uh, you have to ask that question: Who flung the poo? Did your kid do that? Uh, there's no question. Who flung it this time? Ivan Corbin, a dime to Braxton Westfield on fourth down to get the Eagles on the board. 7-0. Carson Newman leads the Erskine Flying Fleet. The joys of parenting that you have to look forward to. Getting married here in a couple weeks. Hopefully kids at some point in the future. But already a cat dad, and we're proud of you for that. Buddy. Yeah, yeah. Very happy to be a part of that. Don't have to deal with any flinging of certain things. But that's a, a really good drive by Carson Newman's offense there. Good adjustments made. In that situation, to be able to drive down the field, Kirsten Newman ut utilizing a lot of the ground game that time around, but enough passing, two catches for 25 yards, and the touchdown from Westfield on the drive. And the Eagles get the opening touchdown of this game and a very good start on both sides of the football for this Eagle group. Irwin has it teed up, strikes it with his left foot, and will drive it into the end zone, and that's what more of what we're familiar with, a touchback. And Erskine will take over first and 10 at its own 25-yard line. 7-0, Eagles in the driver's seat. Hey, Eagle fans, check out Carson Newman Athletics' official online store at shopcneagles.com. It features more than 1,100 products from T-shirts and polos to phone skins and pet collars. Shopcneagles.com, the official online store of the Carson Newman Eagles. Kevon Cato is into the game behind Bryce Jeffcoat at tailback. Too wide to the wide side right for this first and ten play. It's a play fake. Throw the long ball along the left sideline. Jalen Anderson, I think, got shoved from behind by Zion Walker. It's an incompletion. There's a flag on the play, and I, it feels more like offensive pass interference than defensive pass interference. We'll get the official word from Max Melton's crew. Anderson had the position on Zion Walker, it looked like he got the shove from behind. We'll await the official word from Max Melton and company. Max has been around the block for a bit in the South Atlantic Conference. He was actually on the crew. Pass interference on the defense, number one. Penalties 15 yards in the previous spot. Automatic first down. I was gonna say Max Melton was on the crew uh, back in 2005 when Carson Newman hosted Catawba on a Thursday night, one of the rare Thursday, or night games in October, but uh, that certainly felt like it was offensive pass interference. First and 10 fleet from the 40-yard line as a result. Jeff Coat out of the gun, takes the snap, will play fake, roll right. Frank Lee has him, and Frank Lee strikes him to the surface. A sack for Lee, and Jeff Coat driven down Back at the 33-yard line, a loss of seven on the play. Frank Lee sneaks through Richie's crack and drives him down for a loss of seven. Excellent work there by Frank Lee. He wasn't even blocked. And Jeffcoat giving his team the dead fish handshake on the way back to the huddle, realizing that his offensive line let him down. Second down, 17 to go for the fleet right hash at its own 33. Jeffcoat, play fake, wants a fly route along the right sideline. That's batted into the air and incomplete. Strong defensive effort for Jalen Anderson to catch up and then deflect it on a pass intended for 
Walker down at the 35. Well, the game plan for Erskine early appears that they want to test Jalen Anderson. That is the, I believe, the third or fourth deep ball that they have thrown in his direction. And he does a good job of high pointing it and batting it out of the air. And now this Eagles defense can feast on third down. Third and 17 for the fleet. Jeff Coat in the pistol, Cato behind him. Four wide, two each way. Jeff Coat back to pass, now steps up and steps right into the grasp of Carson Newman. Trezel Giradini Weish, a loss of a half a yard. And Carson Newman's defense gave up the pass interference penalty, but stands tall after that. Well, it's good pass rush. We've called Frank Lee's name a lot this season. Talk about a guy in, in terms of a situational pass rusher that's as good as anybody in this league, and that's Trey Zell, Giardini Weiss, the track All-American, makes a very, very good play right there. Erskine sends gravely back to punt. One of the three punters on the roster for the fleet, rugby-style kicker. Somebody might have gotten a piece of that. Boy, did it come off his foot wobbly and weird and immediately goes out of bounds to the far sideline. They're going to spot this at the 48-yard line, so just a 15-yard kick. Not exactly a rootin' tootin' cowboy kick out of Gravely there. I think it was Giardini Weiss that got into the backfield again, and he nearly got a hand on that as the Eagles get great starting field position and set themselves up in fine shape here to take a two-score lead. First and 10 Eagles, left hash at the Fleet 48, leading 7-0, 419 to go first quarter. Hand off King left side. King, nice stiff arm, gets to the left sideline and gets ushered out of bounds down at the 42-yard line. A gain of six for T.J. King. Gravely in on the stop. And that's what Erskine does. You've got a, a cornerback who punt, a cornerback who punts, a quarterback who punts, and a punter who punts. So always be mindful of who's in the backfield kicking for the fleet. Second and four. It's a screen to the left side. That's complete to Braxton Westfield. And Westfield stiff arms his way out of bounds to the left sideline. Gadsden slings him down at the 39. A gain of three to bring up third and one. Simple for Carson Newman. Here are the last couple drives. Lumpkin, Sumpkin, Diddle, Diddle, Pumpkin. Run the football, sprinkle in a couple passes. 3.55 to go, first quarter, 7-0. Eagles on top. Corbin out of the gun, takes the snap, zone read right side. Corbin jitterbugging, has the first down, lowers his shoulders between the hashes inside the 35 and brought down at the 33-yard line by Gleason. Needed one, got six first down for the Eagles. Really shifty work there by Corbin. Offensive line dominating the line of scrimmage here early in this one. First and 10, Carson Newman with the ball, right hash at the fleet, 33, leading 7-0. Corbin, play fake, back to pass, throws the long ball, right sideline, Westfield. Westfield outstretching his right hand, couldn't get it to it down at the two. Harfield in coverage on Westfield, and it's second down and 10 to go. Nearly a touchdown, Westfield needed a little go-go gadget arm to pull, be able to pull that one in, second and 10. Westfield nearly put the baby in the mailbox there, sprinting down the football field, beat his man yet again, and nearly hauled it in with one hand. Second down, 10 to go. Erskine, offsides, free play. Throw it quickly, Westfield, or pardon me, Waters, incomplete. Broken up by Jalen Harfield. But a free play, Eagles are going to have it at first and five. Or second and five, pardon me. Yeah, Carter Vest jumping into the backfield. Offside, on the defense, number 10. Penalty's five yards, repeat second down. Second down, five to go for Carson Newman from the Erskine 28. Corbin from the pistol, double barrel, two tight end look. Snap in the handoff, right side Curtis. Curtis, good head of steam to the right sideline, ambles out of bounds. Down at the 22, Harfield with the escort. Six yards and a chain mover for Carson Newman. Can't credit this offensive line enough. And a lot of the work has been done on this right side. Everybody getting a good push, and that allows for some good space for these running backs early. Three-minute mark. First quarter, 7-0, Carson Newman on top. 
Corbin will give to King left side, picking his way to the boundary, and King will not be able to string it out. He is slung down by Joseph Gilmore, Jr., the freshman quarterback out of Columbia, South Carolina, for a loss of two back to the 24, second and 12. Certainly a scenario there for King. Rather than extend it to the outside, nuzzle that head in and see if he can get a couple yards rather than trying to make something out of nothing. Second and 12 for the Eagles. Left hash at the fleet, 20. Three, Corbin, a quick audible as he surveys the line. Corbin takes the snap. Will option keep it himself left side. Corbin into the boundary over the 20 and buckled down at the 18 over the numbers by Gleason once more. Six-yard gain, third down, and six to go for Carson Newman. Clock at two minutes in the first quarter. Eagles leading 7-0. Well, I praised Erskine's ability to handled the option earlier. This time it was only McClurkin that took his task. The running back, nobody had Corbin in a good game. Third down, six to go. Corbin takes, gives King left side. King a stiff arm, but he is driven down by Jarvis McClurkin toward the left sideline, down at the 16-yard line. A two-yard gain, and on comes Nate Kraft to try to make this a two-score game with a 33-yard try from the left hashes. I'll tell you, I've been impressed with Jarvis McClurkin. He has been lurking this entire game. He's been all over the field, and he has been the biggest issue for Carson Newman's overall attack in the passing game and the running game, and he stops Carson Newman's drive here. Nate Kraft on for a 34-yard kick from the left hashes. Gets it off, and Nate Kraft pushed it wide to the right. So Kraft taps his chest, hands on hips, frustrated with the misfire. Lead holds at 7-0 with a minute three to play in the first quarter. We're back after this on the Eagles Sports Network. At Aramark, this year we go back to our foundation. At Aramark, we are great food and great service with great guests. That is the Aramark way. From coffee at Maples to sandwiches in Stokely, Aramark is here to produce high-quality food for you. A foundation of fresh food a foundation of speedy service, and a foundation that's built for you, now and for the future. That is the Aramark way. At InterDigital, we strive to be a leading provider of cutting-edge digital and marketing solutions. At InterDigital, we want to help our clients find success. Our team of technology gurus work together to ensure InterDigital continues to progress forward as technology advances. At InterDigital, we make technology work for you. Visit InterDigital.com for IT support, web development, virtual tours, graphic design, internet marketing, mobile app, and film production services. InterDigital, laser focused on your success. On first down, Erskine rushes for six yards up to the 26. Now second and four for the Flying Fleet with Jeffco in the gun and Cato to his right. Play fake to Cato. Jeffco rolls right, throws right. It is complete and a great form tackle on Lyles. Might keep him from making the first down. Form work for Jackson Ward, but now give him the spot up to the 30 for four yards and a first down. Well, Carson Newman's defense is begging Erskine to throw the football. There's one deep safety. That's Callum Clements in the middle of the field. Otherwise, Major Williams is dropped down into the box to add a little bit more run support for this group. That will be the final play of the first quarter. 7-0. Carson Newman the lead on Erskine after one. We return to Mossy Creek. Eagles up by seven at the first quarter break. This is the Eagles Sports Network. Premier Building Maintenance Corporation, that name means excellence. For over a quarter of a century, the Premier team delivers service with pride, personal responsibility in delivering excellence. And they also back the Ken Spark Scholarship Fund so that a deserving student may be able to enjoy a great Christian education at Carson Newman. For more information, go to cneagles.com. That's cneagles.com. Backed and helped by Premier Building Maintenance Corporation. First Baptist Church of Powell is a gospel-centered community who loves God and others. We exist by the grace of God for the glory of God, and that is the ultimate purpose in all that we do. First Baptist Powell believes that a healthy disciple is one who gathers with the body of Christ, grows in the grace of Christ, and goes with the gospel of Christ. 
We encourage you to join us for worship Sundays at 10.15 a.m. and learn more about how you can be involved in the life and ministry of our church at fbcpowell.org. First and 10, flying fleet, right hash it. It's own 30-yard line. 7-0, Ersh Erskine trails at the start of the second quarter. And Jeff Coates out of the gun, taking the snap and handing off to Cato straight ahead. And Carson Newman was prepared for it. Cato moves the pile. Great push of the line of scrimmage to drive legs up across the 35 over the right hashes up to the 37-yard line. That play stopped, felt like it was stopped after a yard or two, but five yards extra moving the pile. Yeah, really good churn there by this offense, and we've seen a lot more of Cato after we saw Parker at the beginning of this game. A little more commitment to the run up the middle rather than going wide here for Erskine. Second and three for the fleet toward the right hash at its own 37-yard line. Jeff Cote out of the gun, two wide each way. Running back to his left. Snap back to Jeff Cote. Once the long ball uh, along the right sideline and not able to run under, it, run under it is Floyd Lyles in single coverage with Kendall Williams. Jalen Anderson also there as well as some assistance from Callum Clements. Eagles, three men able to get to that deep ball. Third down, three to go for the fleet. Erskine 0 for 3 so far on third downs. Fleet have gone three and out, turnover on downs, three and out. They've got a first out on this drive. Face third and three for the right hash. Their own 37. Jeff Cote out of the gun, throws. That's complete. Shy of the sticks. Ball flies out. Carson Newman picks it up. Flag on the play after the fumble recovery. It was a first down for Erskine. Gadsden Ward had it. And then Kendall Williams popped out of there. Or pardon me, Jackson Ward popped out of there with the football for Carson Newman, but a lot for Max Melton and crew to sort out. Interesting call to be made here. Let's take a, another look before I make my assessment of what I see. It's definitely a clean rip. And the flags come in after the recovery. I don't know if maybe there was an illegal block after the recovery that maybe the call comes out. But from what we could see on the replay, certainly looks like a clean forced fumble. Didn't appear as if there was any kind of targeting or anything like that against the receiver as the Fumble came from the backside after the reception. And it should be Carson Newman football after that recovery as the officials will have to work things out. Two flags came in, one from each side of the field. The gut, after seeing the replay in the booth, says illegal blindside block on somebody from Carson Newman. I don't know if we can get another look at it, but we'll let Max Melton tell us what's up. Well, it looks like Max was set to chat. I'm pretty sure it's going to be Carson Newman football. There are two fouls on the play. Interesting. First one, personal foul, illegal blindside block on the defense, the team that recovered the fumble. That'll be 15 yards from the spot of the foul. During the play, unsportsmanlike conduct for sideline interference on the black team, that penalty will also be enforced. 15 yards, it'll be first down. Sideline interference, so 30 yards of penalties there for Carson Newman. Thought the blind side block was coming. We've got the replay in the booth uh, upstairs. And I think maybe Jordan Wilson came in. There are two guys that you probably could have called it on. And instead of having the ball at midfield, you've got it first and 10 at your own 20. But defense with some sudden change for the Eagles. The only thing I could think of is maybe a coach or a player started to move up and got in the, away, in the way of the official for that other penalty. That's a huge loss. First and 10 Eagles from their own 20. The handoff goes to Vontae Brackett, and he is caught in the backfield and ripped down by Jordan Stenhouse back at the 15-yard line. That did not develop well at all for Carson Newman. And Nobody blocked him either. Second and 15. Nobody blocked Stenhouse. He's 280 pounds, tough to miss. One of the bigger 
players on the roster overall. It takes up a lot of space in the middle. There's been far too many negative plays for Carson Newman in this game. Have to find ways to get some positive yards because they've been in second and long, third and long too much. 7 nothing Eagles leading 13-15 to go in the second quarter. Corbin is in the gun. And flag flies. False start coming on Carson flag Newman. Down at the far side. Certainly looked like Carson False. Newman was offside. On the offense, number 53. Penalties five yards. Remain second down. So back it up all the way to the 11 now. The thing about this, Carson Newman recovered that fumble in Erskine territory. And now all of a sudden you're back near your own 10-yard line. Second and 19 for Carson Newman. Corbin in the gun, bracket to his right. Corbin takes, rolls right, going to throw right to the sideline. Westfield is there. He's got it up at the 21-yard line. Arfield, the man that pushes him out, good for 10 yards. And gets it to third and a more manageable nine for Carson Newman. Always a good decision to throw the ball to Westfield. And the Eagles get a huge sum back on that play and give themselves a shot here on third down, but another long scenario. 12.32 to play, second quarter. 7-0, Carson Newman leading Erskine. Corbin out of the gun, double barrel. Too wide to the wide side left. On third and nine, straight drop for Corbin. Pressured, steps up, jitterbugs, and goes down for a loss. The fleet drop him for a loss. Chad Stark, the first one there, and Joshua Komodo aids with a loss of two back to the 19. Eagles unable to take advantage of the fumble. They go three and out. 11.58 to play in the second quarter, leading 7-0. Well, you commit two penalties when you recover the football. That costs you 30 yards. Then you commit another penalty after you get the ball, and you're just still a, a lot of trouble there. Kraft back to punt. Gets it off with his right leg. Walker will race up to grab it. A Carson Newman player tapped it with its with his helmet. And instead of it being downed at the 31, you're going to get an illegal touch. And it's going to be Erskine Ball at the 44-yard line. So the fleet takes over when we return to Burktar Stadium after this on the Eagle Sports Network. How do you show your support for Carson Newman? Head over to shopseeneagles.com right now where they have all of your needs covered. From clothing to outfitting your tailgate party, whether you're hunting, fishing, or on the golf course, shopseeneagles.com is the place for you. All of your everyday essentials from pens to phone chargers are in one place. For the best gear in the business, visit shopseeneagles.com today. Dorm food got you down? Need a home-cooked meal? Then Lisa's Country Kitchen is for you. Lisa's Country Kitchen has been feeding Carson Newman students for 15 years. Lisa's has a family-friendly atmosphere all day long. From the morning with her $2.99 breakfast specials to dinner with Lisa's fresh, never-frozen steaks. Carson Newman students get a 10% discount with their student ID. Lisa's Country Kitchen on Route 92 off Old Andrew Johnson Highway. The best food for the best prices. A form tackle on first and ten results in a rush of one yard up to midfield for the fleet. Now second and nine from the 50. Jeff Coat is back to pass. He's going to float it long along the left sideline. Batted ball incomplete into double coverage down at the 15-yard line. Zion Walker once again the target. There's a flag on the play back near the line of scrimmage. Jalen Anderson did a nice job in coverage on that play, but we'll await to see what this hanky is. I'm guessing it's a hold, and interesting that the Eagles will take this penalty instead of it being third down and 10. They make Ineligible it. downfield on the offense, number 52. Penalties five yards, repeat second down. Might be trying to win the field position battle a little bit. I mean, you might be in an area where Erskine is automatically going to go for it on fourth down if it's anywhere close, and potentially. Perhaps, perhaps Larry Slade, too, feels like he can really attack the quarterback here, knowing that Erskine more than likely going to try to air it out. Mallory Pinckney is to the right of Jeff Coat at running back. Bunch formation for the fleet on second and 15. 
It's a backward pass in a screen to Pinckney. Pinckney gummed up. Frank Lee found him, and Pinckney will not make it back to the line of scrimmage. Elite pursuit by the Spartanburg Methodist transfer. He loses a yard back to the 44. Well, that's why you have a former point guard. Started his career as a point guard at Spartan Methodist. Has bulked up a little bit, but shows that agility and skill to get to the edge. Shut it down, Major Williams comes in, and then there is a whole host of Orange Hats. Third and 16 for the fleet, right hash at their own 43-yard line. Jeff Cote is in the pistol with Pinckney behind him. Two wide each way, wide side is to the left. Eagles leading 7-0, 10-minute mark, second quarter. Jeff Cote back to pass, has time, throws right side, high, and Walker able to haul it in down to the 47. Jalen Anderson smashes him out of bounds. Fourth down, seven to go. Playing for four downs here are the fleet. Yeah, certainly you feel like you get that kind of yardage, you at least have a shot, but you're only down seven, nothing. And Curtis Newman's offense has sputtered a good amount in this game, despite the fact that they have the seven, nothing lead and they send out the kicking unit. All right, color me incorrect. Gravely will be back to punt to Jalon Pearson. It's a gain of 10 to make it fourth and seven. But Erskine's going to boot it away, trailing 7 0 with 9.30 to play in the second quarter. Gravely leaps to catch a high snap. Eagles sell out and they block it. Racing to pick it up is Trezel Giradini Weish, and he returns it inside the 30 down to the 27 yard line before he's tackled along the right sideline. Gravely, the guy that brings him down to prevent the touchdown, but Trezel Giradini Weish. Scooping up the block punt, Eagles in business with some special team sudden change. Wonderful work by Carson Newman. Great adjustment to it. It's a high snap. They get into the backfield, and it is Giardini Weiss that gets the block, and the ball kind of sidewinds over to the opposite side of the field where he picks it up. And that is great work by Giardini Weiss, making great impact defensively and now on special teams. First and 10 Eagles from the Fleet 27. Corbin out of the gun, takes the snap. He's going to throw it. Wants the long ball. Left sideline. It is incomplete. Braxton Westfield got turned around on a back shoulder play along the E. First Ian e Eagles on the left side of the end zone. Bats off his hands and is incomplete. That was a touchdown, but Joseph Gilmore Jr. might have made things a little difficult. Second and 10. Well, Ivan Corbin made it difficult because Meeks was wide open in the middle of the field, but... Corbin just gets locked in on Westfield and doesn't even consider throwing it to the outside. And the Eagles, a great chance to score a touchdown, instead settle for an incompletion. First and 10, Eagle, or second and 10 Eagles, right hash at the Fleet 27. King to the left of Corbin in the gun. Handoff goes to King right side, picks his way forward, down to the 25-yard line. Leak Samuel with a stop, just two yards to bring up third down and Eight to go. Well, after a blocked punt, you absolutely have to find the end zone here and come away with points, at least in some capacity. You don't want to let Erskine hang around. This is a team in the fleet that hasn't had a lead since week two against Clark Atlanta. Third down, eight to go for the Eagles. Right hash at the fleet, 25. Trips to the wide side left. Corbin, play fake, back to pass, throws Meeks, left side, incomplete. Just a smidge too far in front of Cade Meeks in the boundary left side of the end zone. Jarvis McClurkin was step for step with him. Meeks still had receivable position, and the Eagles, a three and out after the block punt. Nate Kraft going to come on for a 42-yard field goal try. Carson was just getting so antsy to throw the football down the field. They've gotten away from the run game on some of these change of possession scenarios, and now you have to bury this kick, and it actually looks like it's Christian yep. Irwin. Christian Irwin, a 42-yard try. The lefty on. Irwin puts his leg into it, and Christian Irwin punches it through. So Christian Irwin buries a 42-yard kick. Eagles get three after the blocked field goal, and it's a 10-0 lead in favor of Carson Newman with 8.22 to play in the second quarter. This will be a media timeout. Media timeout. We'll step out for a break. Thanks, Max Melton. Eagles up 10-0. Back after this on the Eagles Sports Network. It's payday, and on payday, you want to have access to your money right away. When you enroll for direct deposit at Knoxville TVA Employees Credit Union, 
Your money comes to you with no waiting. It's the fastest and most secure way to get paid. Getting set up is easy. All you need is your account number and our routing number. Find out more at TVACreditUnion.com. Join us. Join us now. Federally insured by NCUA. Some restrictions apply. Ask for details. Hey, folks, you're listening with Ted Russell Nissan. Two cheeseburgers, two medium fries, any two drinks of your choice. Tea, coffee, or soft drink. Just Whoa, cut. Gerald, wrong script. I thought something sounded wrong. Here we go. Brand new Ultimas, Rogues, Pathfinders, Maximus, Frontiers, all in stock. Ted Russell Nissan on Kingston Pike. Hey, folks, Gerald Anderson with Ted Russell Nissan. This week, russet potatoes are on sale. Ground beef, just a pound. Thumb a good watermelon. Whoa, 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 Gerald, wrong script. Here we go. Ted Russell Nissan, Ultimas, Rogues, Pathfinders, Maximus, Frontiers, all new and in stock. Ted Russell Nissan on Kingston Pike. All right, Cinnamon football with a 10-0 lead over the Erskine Flying Fleet. Adam Cavalier, Michael Watrang, happy to have you on hand. Our spotter producer, Andrew Rodiger, sideline reporter, Leanda Carey. And Dave Claybo running the show back inside of Network Control. 10-0 Eagles lead off of Irwin's 42-yard field goal. Three play, two yard drive, 54 seconds off the clock, set up by Trazel Giradini Weish's blocked punt. And now Irwin on to kick off. Walker back at his five deep to receive. Irwin with the wind at his back, hangs it high and hangs it five yards deep into the end zone for a touchback. Well, it has been weird weather here at Burke Tar Stadium. Supposed to be 0% chance of rain today. And nope, overcast, overcast clouds. Uh, it has precipitated. In fact, fans still have the umbrellas out. If it is raining, it's more of a sprinkle. First and 10, flying fleet left hash at its own 25-yard line. Jeff Coat out of the gun with Parker to his right. And in motion, Smith to the right. Trips to the wide side right. Jeff Coat takes Keeper as he slides forward. And Jeff Coat going to slide down and up at the 30. And a late flag comes in. Potential targeting coming, coming on Carson Newman. Let's see what this officiating crew has to say. Jeff Coat was sliding down. We get a second look upstairs in the booth. On the design quarterback draw, Major Williams was there, but it really didn't feel like Williams leaned forward to make contact with him. There really wasn't a lot no. in that. Uh, I thought maybe it was Nick Owens yeah, on the backside that was maybe a little guiltier of at least piling on after the slide. Personal foul on the defense. Late hit. Penalty's 15 yards. Automatic first down. So Max Melton doesn't point the finger at whom it was on. I lean toward, uh, I lean toward your camp. Nick Owens being the guilty party, regardless. Yeah, came move came it, from the backside. Move it forward up to the 45. Yeah, he came from the backside and made a little bit of contact there. And Chris Newman has had its fair share of penalties in this one that have cost him. First and 10, flying fleet, middle of the field at, its own 45. Jeff Coat from the gun will hand off Parker left side and Parker immediately hit by DeAndre Williams and Jordan Wilson over the left hash is up at the 48 yard line. Second down, seven to go. Well, Erskine's been using a rotation of running backs as well in this game. Parker getting this shift in the backfield and first Newman's seen a variety of options there. Defense has been really, really solid all game long for this group and trying to communicate as a unit. Major Williams providing an extra bit of depth there in the linebacking spot, moving down from a safety roll. Second and seven. Nice zone read keep on a jet sweep fake for Jeff Coat. And he's got first down yardage running over the right hashes inside the 45 down to the Carson Newman 41. That was a really nice play by Bryce Jeff Coat. And he gobbles up 11 yards to move the sticks. Yeah, that's a really good work right there because he rode that fake as well. And he held on to the ball. One of the Carson Newman players came at the last moment, got a pop to the arm where he was carrying the football, held on to it and ensured that it wouldn't be a fumble. Did nothing. 
Eagles leading the fleet with 6.58 to play in the second quarter. Erskine on the move, though. They've got it first and 10 right hash at the Carson Newman 41. Jeff Coat from the pistol. Takes the snap, blitzed from the backside. Jeff Coat throws as he's hit on the run. Incomplete, too tall for Zion Walker along the right sideline down at the 25. A flag on the play back where the pass was thrown. And hold on Erskine, the signal initially from Max Melton. So back this up for the fleet after Carson Newman timed up the blitz perfectly. Holding. On the offense, number 52. Philly's 10 yards, repeat first down. So charge Miles best with the penalty. Jeff Coat had Walker as well. He was wide open in a patch of coverage. And if he just keeps it on the field, Walker's got a nice catch all along the sideline and a first down. Instead, he airmails it. And on top of that, the penalty backs him up back into their own territory now and forces first and long. Serving East Tennessee for 40 years, Magaha Electric is the perfect choice for all your electrical projects. Visit MagahaElectric.com for all your electrical contracting needs. Jeff Coat throwing right side, batted in the air, incomplete. Who else? Frank Lee, skyward to deflect a pass at the line of scrimmage. Third down, pardon me, second down and 20 to go. Frank Lee's having a big time day from his defensive end position, putting his hand in the ground. He realizes that he's not getting into the backfield this time around. Slams on the brakes, reads the quarterback's eyes, and leaps at the perfect time to swat that one down. Second down, 20 to go for the fleet. Jeff Coat all by his lonesome in the gun from his own 49. Trips to the left, two to the right, and everybody moving. Flags all over. Carson Newman jumped, Erskine jumped, feels like a snap infraction. All the wide receivers ran down the field. False start on the offense, number two. Penalty's five yards, still second down. So Kayvon Parker, the official culprit. And it's now second and 25. Back at the Fleet 44, the first down line to make is the Carson Newman 31. Empty set for Jeff Coat. Three to the wide side left. Jeff Coat draw straight ahead. Frank Lee read it. Frank Lee wraps him up and sticks him back to the turf for a loss of one back to the 43. Good night, Frank Lee. Couple indicators right there for Carson Newman's defense. Parker came out of the backfield, motioned all the way out. He was basically standing on the chalk of the sideline. There's nobody in the middle of the field, and Frank Lee in this defensive line run, a stunt. He comes right up the middle and blows it up. Third and 26 for the fleet. They need the Eagle 31 to keep the drive alive, trailing 10 0 with 5.55 to play in the second quarter. Jeff Coat takes the shotgun snap, twist comes, throws middle of the field. That is complete to Parker. Parker doesn't have numbers. He's across midfield over the boundary left side. And brought down at the Carson Newman 47 yard line. Did get 10 yards, but it's second down and, or fourth down part of me and still longer than 10 yards. Fourth and 17 and on comes the punt unit. It's a good play call. You're trying to get it to look almost like a punt return because it's basically a screen pass. You send the offensive lineman down the field and see if they can get some blocks, have your running back make some guys miss. So Gravely will kick it away. Snap comes back. No rush, gets this one off, and Pearson will let it bounce at the 10. Takes a Carson Newman roll into the end zone for a touchback. We step aside for a break. Eagle ball leading 10-0 with 5.08 to play in the second quarter here on the Eagle Sports Network. Serving East Tennessee for 40 years, Magaha Electric is the perfect choice for all your electrical projects. Magaha Electric specializes in commercial, retail, manufacturing, residential, and industrial contracting needs. Magaha Electric can provide superior service, technical know-how, and realistic budgeting for any size project in a timely, cost-effective manner. Visit MagahaElectric.com for all your electrical contracting needs. Magaha Electric, your East Tennessee electrical contracting source. 
Trilight is proud to support Carson Newman Athletics. We salute the student athletes who are working hard to make great things happen on the field, in the classroom, and in the world. It takes vision, commitment, and teamwork, qualities we share at Trilight. Our mission is to provide life-changing opportunities by building a world-class fiber broadband network. If you'd like to learn more, please visit trilight.net or call us at 833-847-0824. No gain for T.J. King on first down, and now on second down, a slant over the middle of the field, incomplete to Braxton Westfield. Off his outstretched left hand, Harfield in coverage. Third and ten, Corbin put a ton of mustard on it. And it ends up incomplete. Carson Newman has fallen way too far in love with the passing game, but they haven't been able to get the running game going either, averaging less than three yards per carry, at least at this point in the ball game. And uh, for Carson Newman, you're in way too many third down and long scenarios that the Eagles haven't run any draws or screens to really any kind of success this year. Third and 10, speed option left. Corbin pitches Curtis. Curtis stays up along the left sideline and flies out of bounds up at the 26. There's a flag on the play back where Corbin pitched it. To your point about the running backs, let's not forget, this is a running back room that is beat up. T.J. King's not healthy. Jalon Pearson's not healthy. Tyree Nelson's not playing today. Uh, and Vontae Brackett not at full strength either. So you've got a running back room who, with three guys that were questionable at best coming in, probably two of them doubtful, and they're deciding to gut it out. Tyler Curtis really the only guy who's healthy, and that impacts a little bit of what the Eagles can do from a play-calling standpoint. My guess here on this play is that it's an illegal crackback block on Braxton Westfield. There is no foul on the play. Thank you, too. Shut up, little bro. Be fourth down. Fourth down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Somebody did not like uh, uh, an amount of talking that was being done by somebody little. <laughs> That's a polite way to, to put it. I'm surprised perhaps they didn't throw that flag because Westfield did come back uh, to crack back there, but the play design close to the line of scrimmage, the Eagles do a pretty good job. So Kraft on the punt, but before that, Chat Boyd is going to burn a timeout. Timeout, Erskine, that's their first. Charge timeout. Erskine was late getting the guy off the field, so we'll step aside for a break as well. 4.08 to play in the second quarter. Carson Newman has a 10-0 lead in hand. We're back after this on the Eagle Sports Network. Drive safer longer when you visit your local Michelin fleet tires or other Michelin Defender tires. Michelin is the brand drivers turn to for tire options that deliver a safe, quiet, and comfortable ride. Fleet Tire, Woodland Avenue, exit 1B, Knoxville. Based on internal wet braking results, versus Goodyear Assurance Comfort Tread tires and third-party wear test results versus Continental Pro Track tires with Eco Plus. See Manufacturer's Limited Warranty Book for details. Fleet Tire, Woodland Avenue. Premier Building Maintenance Corporation. That name means excellence. For over a quarter of a century, the Premier team delivers service with pride, personal responsibility in delivering excellence. And they also back the Ken Spark Scholarship Fund, so that a deserving student may be able to enjoy a great Christian education at Carson Newman. For more information, go to cneagles.com. That's cneagles.com. Backed and helped by Premier Building Maintenance Corporation. A fair catch on the punt from Walker, and Erskine will take over. Pretty strong field position. First and 10 at its own 40-yard line, Adam Cavalier. Michael Watrang, happy to have you on hand. Andrew Rogers, our producer spotter, Leander Carey down on the sidelines. Dave Claybo back in the studio. And then our fantastic video crew on this Saturday night, Danny Wazorix, our director, Phil Barger, our replay operator. And then our marvelous camera crew, Mary Vandergriff, Mia Taribio, Rick Gentaholm, and Jay West. Er Erskine takes over, first and 10, right hash at its own 40. Jeff Coat in the gun with Cato to his right. Jeff Coat claps his hands, takes the shotgun snap, hands off Cato left side. Frank Lee right there. 
And the alligator death rolls him to the surface back at the 38, a loss of two, second and 12. Well, Frank Lee's having a great game overall, but let's be fair to this Erskine team. They have not blocked him on the majority of these <laughs> plays, which is almost surprising after all of this that they are refusing to block him. And that time, Jeff Coat ro rode that a little bit, and they were trying to read Lee, and he did a good job of holding both. Second and 12, Jeff Coat by himself in the gun, throws slant, left side, boundary, complete. Up at the 44-yard line, the target, Walker, for the completion. Hit immediately by Alonzo Houston up at the 45-yard line. A gain of seven to bring up third and five. Well, this has been the down where Carson Newman's been really good in this game. Third downs have been an issue for much of this season, but their blitz packages and pressures have gotten a Jeff Coat. Third and five for the fleet. And before we get there, a whistle, there's a flag. Flag is down on the far side. Full start on the offense number 19. Penalty's five yards, remains third down. Erskine came into this game among the least penalized teams in the South Atlantic Conference, but they have had some really costly penalties today. Third and 10 for the fleet. Left hash at its own 40 yard line. Jeff Coat, pistol set, trips to the wide side right. Takes the snap. Jeff Coat going to throw the long ball, left sideline. Incomplete. Walker the target. And don't know if he ever had a prayer. Jalen Anderson was in coverage. He was kind of falling back, extended his right hand down at the Carson Newman 29. Felt like it was always going to be an incompletion, and the Eagles defense does the job. Two minutes, 19 seconds to go before halftime. Carson Newman has a full complement of timeouts. They won the toss, deferred as well. So they get the ball to start the second half. Here's a chance not only to just go two for one, but perhaps put this game out of reach. Gravely on to punt. It's off a wobbler that will bounce at the 35, and Pearson will watch it side spin down to the 24, where Pearson elects to pick it up. And he's immediately tackled at the 24. Carson Newman takes over after the Erskine three and out, first and 10. At its own 24-yard line with 2.07 to play. Well, let's see what Brock Persley and this Carson Newman offense looks at in this situation. Eagles have had some success in the ground game at times, some success in the passing game at times. The problem has been is there's been a lot of negative plays and a lot of zero yardage plays. First and 10 Eagles, right hash at their own 24. Corbin. Back to pass, now sprints Corbin. Good positive yardage across the 30. Picks up the first down up to the 35-yard line. Smith rips him down around the waist. A gain of 11 and a first down for the Eagles. Yeah, great work right there by Ivan Corbin. And then the blocking down the field. Tyler Curtis had a good block at the second level. Great drive starter. And now put themselves in good position. First and 10 Eagles. Right hash at their own 35. Corbin back to pass. Zips it right sideline. That's complete to Westfield up at the 41-yard line. Harfield rips him down inbounds after the six-yard gain, second and four. Minute 45 to play. Second quarter, Eagles leading 10-0, trying to put together a quality two-minute offensive possession. Corbin back to pass, wants the long ball along the right sideline, and that bounces off an official. Incomplete, Westfield step for step with Harfield. But that was never gonna be catchable. Well, the problem right now for Carson Newman in the passing game is just so many targets to Westfield. He's getting pretty much every single ball is being thrown in his direction, or at least on his side of the field. Gotta keep this Erskine defense honest. 98 seconds left. First half, Eagles on third and four have a pass batted into the air and it's picked off. An interception for Jordan Stenhouse. Oh, strike that, not Stenhouse. Jeremiah Jennings gets some sudden change with 92 ticks left 
on a ball batted into the air. And Erskine has it first and 10 with 92 seconds left, trailing 10 nothing at the Eagle 38. Well, about the only thing that you could ill afford to do there is turn the ball over. And that is really good work defensively there by Jeremiah Jennings, batting the ball in the air, locating it, and then coming down with it himself. And now Erskine has a chance for points before the break. Trailing the Eagles 10-0. Fleet with it right hash at the Carson Newman 38. Jeff Coat out of the pistol. Takes the snap. Three-step drop. Steps up in the pocket. Going to air it long along the right sideline. Incomplete. And over the top of Travaris Walker, who was wide open along the right sideline. Nestled in space between Jalen Anderson and Callan Clements. And it's second and ten. Well, it was a good throw by Jeff Coat. I was watching Walker the entire way, and around the 25-yard line, he almost pulled the shoot and just slow, slowed down. If he would have kept running the entire way, he would have caught that ball and maybe gotten into the end zone. 86 seconds left. Second quarter. A 10-0 lead for Carson Newman over Erskine, but the fleet after the pick have it second and 10. Right hash at the Eagle 38. Jeff Coat out of the gun. Will ride the zone read and keep it himself. Jeff Coat wiggles his way over the right hashes down to the 29-yard line. Major Williams stopped him. And Jeff Coat rode the zone read handoff a long time and picks up nine yards to bring up third and one. Minute five left, Erskine with two timeouts in the back pocket. Jeff Coat from the pistol, claps his hands, takes the snap. Going to throw quickly for Walker, incomplete. In and out of his hands, down at the 25, a drop. Major Williams had the footsteps, and it's fourth and one. Well, that's big because, A, it stops the clock, which benefits the Eagles if Erskine cannot pick up this fourth down scenario here. We mentioned it. They don't kick field goals. This would be 46 yards, and if you haven't attempted one this year, why now? And right now, if you're Erskine, you have to get that first down, but you also have two timeouts left. So even if you just get a yard or two, you might have to consider burning it or at least spiking the ball right away. Fourth and a yard for the fleet. Right hash at the Eagle 29. Jeff Coat from the pistol, takes the snap, hands off to Cato. He's buckled in the backfield. Turnover on downs. DeAndre Williams on the run blitz, shoots the gap and sends him down for a loss of two back at the 31. Carson Newman read the snap count. You could see before the ball was snapped that hosts of black jerseys from the second and third levels we're trucking it towards the line of scrimmage. Great timing, great tackle by Williams and the Eagles with the ball back. 54 seconds left, Eagles up 10-0. Latter stages of the first half. Corbin calls his own number on first and 10. It's a run to the left sideline and Corbin hustles out of bounds up at the 39 yard line for an eight yard gain. McClurkin, the usher, second and two. Clock stops, 49 seconds left. Certainly for Carson Newman, clock management critical now. Mention all three timeouts, just trying to get into field goal range. Second down, two to go for the Eagles. Left hash at their own 39. It's a handoff straight ahead for Curtis. Curtis powering his way over the left hashes up across the 45 to the 47-yard line for a six-yard gain. McClurkin and Brown to stop. Clock winds. 39-38. Eagles up 10-0. Ladder stages, second quarter. Eagles get the ball after halftime. Corbin, play action. Going to throw the long ball. Westfield, left sideline. Westfield hustling. He has it at the 10. Westfield reaches for the end zone. Not quite there. Stopped at the 1. Braxton Westfield, the old heave-ho from Ivan Corbin, picks up 49 yards. A flag on the play back at the eagle head. Ineligible downfield on the offense, number 50. Penalties five yards from the previous spot. Repeat first down. Now that is backbreaking. A beautiful ball from Corbin to Westfield. Had the Eagles down at the one with 26 seconds left. You ran the ball, you ran the ball, you dial up play action. And Eagles hurt by Jones upfield and 
think he knew it as we got to look at the replay up in the booth. Well, there are two guys downfield in fairness to Jones. I think it was Brian Doe, the center, that likewise was down the football Carson field. Newman, that's their first. And, and that's the timeout. kind of stuff that we talked about at the outset, playing clean football, being smart about certain scenarios. And that play right there highlights some of the frustration that Carson Newman has had this season. Rather than an opportunity to go up 17 nothing and a pretty clear as day opportunity to go up 17 nothing with 25 seconds to go. Now you're battling just to try to get into field goal range because the penalty now knocks you back five yards as well. You lose the time on the clock, and you're in a tough position here on first and 15, and you probably need about 15, 20 yards for a field goal attempt. InterDigital strives to be a leading provider of cutting-edge digital and marketing solutions. Visit innerdigital.com for IT support, web development, virtual tours, Graphic design, internet marketing, mobile app, and film production services. InterDigital, they are laser focused on your success. So, first and 15 now for Carson Newman. Back between the hashes. At his at its own 41 yard line. Corbin from the gun, three step drop, throws left sideline, Westfield complete. Westfield gets extra yardage against Harfield, and Mosey's out of bounds down at the 42 yard line. That is enough for 17 yards and a first down. Harfield sagged off of him, thought he was just going to go out of bounds. Westfield took advantage and picked up about five extra yards. Yeah, it's perfect for Carson Newman because you, you get the refresh of downs. You get bo the ball out of bounds as well. You can serve both timeouts, and now you have a chance to get that extra 10 or 15 yards with a couple plays. First and 10, Eagles left hash at the Fleet 42. Corbin out of the gun, going to throw the long ball, right sideline, jump ball, batted, incomplete. Washington, the target, down at the 20. Over the numbers right side, Metcalf was step for step with him. Second and 10 with 14.8 seconds left. Eagles up 10-0. Been a herky-jerky kind of half. You've had a, a fumble, a pick for Carson Newman, a blocked punt that led to a field goal. And let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six combined three and outs in this one. Been a high possession half. Second and 10 for the Eagles left hash at the Fleet 42. Corbin back to pass, pumps, pressured. Corbin evades it. Corbin racing to the right, eight seconds. Corbin zings it. It is complete to Luke Simpson in the flat right side. Down at the 25 yard line over the sack logo. Four seconds left and you gotta burn the timeout. McClurkin and Gleason, the guys that were hot to Luke Simpson. But Ivan Corbin able to. Timeout, Carson Newman, that's their second. Charge timeout. Ivan Corbin able to wiggle and ramble and extend the play. Not sure if you just want him to, hey, get rid of it and maybe get two more cracks because now you're pretty much uh, locked into a field goal. Well, here's the other thing about it. It was a screen play drawn up, and I thought for a second maybe it was an eligible downfield, but now that I'm – actually, I think it should have been because there was one man for Carson Newman – that was about five yards down the field when that ball was thrown because it's a screen pass. You're leaking the alignment out, and that hurt Carson Newman the last time around. This time, the officials, I mean, it kind of worked to their favor because all the action was going the other way. That's where the officials focus their attention. And Carson Newman dodges a bullet there. And with four seconds to go, you get an opportunity to try to boot a field goal and see if you can add to this lead. And what has been maybe a little bit of an up-and-down overall effort in the first half, but still a solid effort for Carson Newman's club, particularly if they could finish this off with three points here to go into the locker room. Had some issues with the stats computer, so we don't have what we fully believe are totally accurate uh, stats. But at present standing, what that says is both teams are under 100 yards. It kind of has that feel to it. Now, Christian Irwin is going to come on to try another 42-yard kick from the right hashes. High to hold, Brad shot a snap. Snap, hold, Irwin, kick, plenty. Of length, does it have the line? It does. Christian Irwin strikes through his second 42-yard field goal of the day, and the Eagles head into the halftime locker room with a 13-0 lead. Two-minute offense, 
it works. And Carson Newman, after you thought about the miscue with the interception, defense gets the turnover on downs. You hate that the long pass play to Westfield didn't hold true, but uh, you're headed into the locker room with a score. You get the football to start the second half with a 13-0 lead. Yeah, it's a positive way to end the half. At the end of the day, considering the fact that a few minutes ago, Carson Newman had just thrown an interception. Erskine had the ball on the plus side of the football field with a chance to get points of their own. Carson Newman defense holds. They hold on a fourth and one situation. And with all that, Carson Newman would have been much more happy with the touchdown, but they're delighted to get points at the end of the half. Some things to clean up for the Eagles at halftime, but a two-score lead going to the locker room. 13-0, Eagles up at the break on the Erskine Flying Fleet. ShopSaintEagles.com halftime report. Heads your way when we come back after this on the Eagles Sports Network. The number one source for Carson Newman Athletics gear is ShopSeeingEagles.com, where you can find gear from Adidas, Columbia, Nike, and Under Armour. Shirts, jerseys, sweatshirts, shorts, pants, hats, and scarves. ShopSeeingEagles.com is your source for everything CN. You can even show your school spirit on your smartphone or tablet. All of your game day essentials can be found in one place. ShopSeeingEagles.com. At Aramark, this year we go back to our foundation. At Aramark, we are great food and great service with great guests. That is the Aramark way. From coffee and maples to sandwiches and Stokely, Aramark is here to produce high quality food for you. A foundation of fresh food, a foundation of speedy service, and a foundation that's built for you now and for the future. That is the Aramark way. Touchdown, Carson Newman! More great Carson Newman memories are headed your way in 60 seconds on the Eagles Sports Network. First Baptist Church of Powell is a gospel-centered community who loves God and others. We exist by the grace of God for the glory of God. And that is the ultimate purpose in all that we do. First Baptist Powell believes that a healthy disciple is one who gathers with the body of Christ, grows in the grace of Christ, and goes with the gospel of Christ. We encourage you to join us for worship Sundays at 10.15 a.m. and learn more about how you can be involved in the life and ministry of our church at fbcpowell.org. It's payday, and on payday, you want to have access to your money right away. When you enroll for direct deposit at Knoxville TVA Employees Credit Union, your money comes to you with no waiting. It's the fastest and most secure way to get paid. Getting set up is easy. All you need is your account number and our routing number. Find out more at tvacreditunion.com. Join us. Join us now. Federally insured by NCUA. Some restrictions apply. Ask for details. AM 620 WRTZ Knoxville. It's halftime on the Eagles Sports Network. Highlights. A check of the ShopCNEagles.com scoreboard. And stats are headed your way. Straight ahead! Touchdown, Carson Newman! Now let's head back to the field. Here's the voice of the Eagles, Adam Cavalier. All right, halftime in Jefferson City where Carson Newman holds a 13-0 lead over the Erskine Flying Fleet. A halftime where Carson Newman gets two 42-yard field goals from Christian Irwin. And a 17-yard touchdown catch from Braxton Westfield. Here to tell you about how that all sorted out is Andrew Rogers. Thanks, Adam. It started in a first quarter. Carson Newman had the only touchdown of that first half on a receiving touchdown from Braxton Westfield on a pass from Ivan Corbin. Put the Eagles on the board. Corbin takes. Going to throw the right sideline. Down. Carson Newman, Braxton Westfield on a free play. Got it with two hands in the end zone. And the Eagles light the lamp first with 5.51 to go in the first quarter at 6-0. Their team scored the rest of that quarter. And then in the second quarter, the Eagles were able to get a team. But Christian Arwin had an opportunity and booted home a field goal to make it 10-0. Irwin, a 42-yard try. The lefty on. Irwin puts his leg into it, and Christian Irwin punches it through. So Christian Irwin buries a 42-yard kick. Eagles get three after the blocked field goal, and it's a 10-0 lead in favor of Carson Newman with 8.22 to play 
in the second quarter. Field goal came after the block, setting up that opportunity for Carson Newman. And then the Eagles got the ball back toward the end of that first half and took advantage of drive. A good pass from Ivan Corbin found the trap of Simpson. Set up Christian Irwin in field goal range, and he took advantage to make it to 13. Bad shot of snap. Snap, hold, Irwin, kick, plenty of length. Does it have the line? It does. Christian Irwin strikes through his second 42-yard field goal of the day, and the Eagles head into the halftime locker room with a 13-0 lead. Field goals and the first quarter touchdown. Lead over Erskine after first half of action. Good defense. That and on the offensive, a couple of goals and the touchdown. The two advantage at the break. We'll take a break here on the Eagle Sports Network of the ShopSeenEagles.com halftime show. When we come back, look around at sack scores and other Division II scores. Thanks. I get my power from my co-op so I can put my energy into my family. Into waking up the neighborhood. Latte for Christine. I get my power from the co-op so I can put my energy into planting seeds for a brighter future. Touchstone Energy Cooperatives power to your community, for your community, so your energy can go into the things that matter most to you. My 69 Camaro. Who powers you? AEC, the right call for your energy needs. Let us help you score success. When you're sick and tired of fast food and need a fresh home-cooked meal, turn to Lisa's Country Kitchen. Lisa's been cooking up her fresh, never-frozen food for the Lakeway area for more than 15 years. Lisa's cares about her customers. You may enter a stranger, but you'll leave a friend. From footlong hot dogs to juicy steaks, Lisa's has the best food for the best prices. Lisa's Country Kitchen on Route 92, Andrew Johnson Highway. The best food for the best prices. A check of the ShopCeanEagles.com SAC scoreboard is next. This is the Eagles Sports Network. We got it going on. Hey, folks, Gerald Eswick. Line. Our detail shop will detail your car for just $79. Well, what about new vehicle inventory? We got them. Ultimus, Pathfinders, Maximus, Frontiers, even brand new Rogues, all in stock. And remember, you always get top dollar for your trade. Slipping, dripping, skipping, rocking, knocking, it don't matter. Even wreck with a bad car fax. Just bring that sled to Ted right here in beautiful West Knox alone. Keeps the fight. Drive safer longer when you visit your local Michelin dealer, Fleet Tire, for a set of Michelin Defender tires. Michelin is the brand drivers turn to. For tire options that deliver a safe, quiet, and comfortable ride, Fleet Tire Wooden Avenue, exit 1B, Knoxville. Based on internal wet braking results versus Goodyear Assurance Comfort Tread tires and third-party wear test results versus Continental Pro Track tires with Eco Plus. See Manufacturer's Limited Warranty Book for details. Fleet Tire Woodland Avenue. The Eagle Sports Network is a part of SAC Live, the official digital network of the South Atlantic Conference. SAC Live is the home of all your South Atlantic Conference sports action, including 20 SAC championships. Time to get caught up with some SAC action. Here are the happenings around the South Atlantic Conference and the nation. Let's go around the league with a ShopCNEagles.com scoreboard update. Now back to the field. Andrew Rogers back here on the ShopCNEagles.com halftime show with the Eagles leading the Flying Fleet. It's a busy day. The conference started uh, at noon today. Tuskegee takes UVA-wise 10-9, a road victory 
Neither team scored in the fourth quarter. They traded field goals in the third as the Pioneers hold on and take down Wise 10-9. to nine. An overtime thriller went home for Limestone, but they fall to Wingate high t seven points, 28-21 the final there. Mars Hill on homecoming takes down Emory and Henry. Final score there, 49-14. Big win for Mars Hill. Those were two teams that were tied for first in the Mountain Division. Now it's just Mars Hill and Tuscum tied atop the Mountain Division with a 4-1 conference record. Lenore Ryan destroyed Barton today, 34-0 the final. They shut out Barton to secure a road victory to the Bears. The other matchup going on this evening, that's also a halftime score, Newberry, 24th-ranked Newberry ahead of Catawba at the half. It is 20-7. A look around at some other top 25 scores in Division II football. First quarter score, Ohio Dominican trailing number 11, Ashland. It is 7-0 West Alabama, Delta State. Just getting underway, no score there. Delta State ranked number 7. Virginia Union holds on their 15th in the country. They hold on to defeat Bowie State 27-24 to in overtime. The matchup of the day, one versus two, Ferris State taking on Grand Valley. Grand Valley wins it 22-21 to secure a road victory there. West Georgia, a team Carson Newman played earlier in the year, takes down North Greenville on the road 38-35. Slippery Rock 40, Gannon 7, Slippery Rock a 19th ranking this season. Benedict falls, or Benedict take down, takes down, I should say, Albany State. Final score, 24 to 20. Indianapolis ranked 16th is going to fall this evening to Saginaw Valley, 38 to 14. Harding, number eight, Harding upset by Henderson State, 15-14. Harding was at home in that matchup. Sixth ranked Pittsburgh State fall takes down Lincoln out of Missouri, 49-10. to 10. Sioux Falls, a winner over Mary, 41-27. to 27. Just another quick run-through of the South Atlantic Conference. Scores Tuscalum 10-9 victory earlier today against UVA Wise. Wingate also won on the road in overtime, defeating Limestone 28-21. Mars Hill 49, Emory and Henry 14. Lenore Ryan shuts out Barton 34-0. And then a halftime score. Newberry ahead of Catawba, 22-7. We'll take another break here on the CNEagles.com halftime show. We come back, let you know about a busy Saturday and other Carson Newman athletics as well as some first-half stats. That's next when we return here on the Eagles Sports Network. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. Call 423-585-4000 for the Carson Newman rate. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. Call 423-585-4000 for the Carson Newman rate. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. Call 423-585-4000 for the Carson Newman rate. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. Call 423-585-4000 for the Carson Newman rate. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. Serving East Tennessee for 40 years, Magaha Electric is the perfect choice for all your electrical projects. Magaha Electric specializes in commercial, retail, manufacturing, residential, and industrial contracting needs. Magaha Electric can provide superior service, technical know-how, and realistic budgeting for any size project in a timely, cost-effective manner. Visit MagahaElectric.com for all your electrical contracting needs. Magaha Electric, your East Tennessee electrical contracting source. Derek Evans, 79 yards on the first play from scrimmage. You found the home of Carson Newman football on the Eagles Sports Network. Premier Building Maintenance Corporation, that name means excellence. For over a quarter of a century, the Premier team delivers service with pride, personal responsibility in delivering excellence. And they also back the Ken Spark Scholarship Fund, so that a deserving student may be able to enjoy a great Christian education at Carson Newman. For more information, go to cneagles.com. That's cneagles.com. Backed and helped by Premier Building Maintenance Corporation. First Baptist Church of Powell is a gospel-centered community who loves God and others. We exist by the grace of God for the glory of God. And that is the ultimate purpose in all that we do. First Baptist Powell believes that a healthy disciple is one who gathers with the body of Christ, grows in the grace of Christ, and goes with the gospel of Christ. 
We encourage you to join us for worship Sundays at 10.15 a.m. and learn more about how you can be involved in the life and ministry of our church at fbcpowell.org. AM 620 WRJZ Knoxville. Rogers back here on the ShopZeneagles.com halftime show with Carson Newman leading Erskine. As halftime score 13 0. Three other Carson Newman team were in action on this Saturday. And they were all pretty successful. The volleyball team took down Coker in straight sets 25 20, 5 5, and 25 to 11. Julia Wheeler has had 13 kills in the match to lift the Eagles past the Cobras. Carson Volleyball is back in action on Tuesday at home against Crosstown rival. Soccer teams were Southbury, North Carolina, the Catawba Indian. First game of the day, Carson Newman men's soccer was in action and used a second half late surge to take down the Indians. The Eagles were playing 10 guys in the final 25, but held on to win that matchup 2-1. to one. That's a huge victory for the Eagles on the men's side. They move into a sole possession of first place. The women's soccer team tied nationally ranked Catawba 1-1. That game came final about 6 o'clock. Good win, or good draw, I should say, for Simon Duffy's team. The Eagles still in third place, only one point behind Lenore Ryan and Catawba in that soccer range. Frankies, you may have heard in the background some cheering. Tennessee just knocked off Alabama, uh, so certainly an interesting win there for the Volunteers. A couple of numbers from the first half which before we take our final break. Eagles 150 yards of offense to the 72 for Erskine. Seven points in the first quarter, two field goals in the second. Both teams pretty heavy in the penalty category. 14 total. Eagles had eight of those. Erskine with the other six. Eagles were three of nine on third down. We'll take a break. Second half action on the way. Adam Cavalier, Michael Watchering take you through the second half of action. We return with the Eagles leading 13-0 here on the Eagles Sports Network. We select our insurance companies the same way you do, very carefully. When you work with us, you can count on receiving fast, courteous, and professional service and quality protection through auto owner's insurance. For a no-problem approach for your life, home, car, and business insurance needs, ask us about the no-problem company, Auto Owner's Insurance. Call Bible Insurance Agency at 423-586-4320 or go by 1600 East Andrew Johnson Highway in Morristown, serving the Lakeway area's insurance needs since 1931. Domino's Pizza in Jefferson City and Morristown wants to help feed your business. When you're hungry at lunch, show your business card at Domino's in Jefferson City and Morristown when you make your purchase for pickup or delivery to get 25% off the entire order. That's 25% off your order at Domino's in Jeff City and Morristown when you show your business card. Call 865-471-6700 to get a pizza. Domino's, the official pizza of the Carson Newman Eagles. The home run hitter to Dorian Miller, 70 yards. This is Carson Newman football on the Eagles Sports Network. It's payday, and on payday, you want to have access to your money right away. When you enroll for direct deposit at Knoxville TVA Employees Credit Union, your money comes to you with no waiting. It's the fastest and most secure way to get paid. Getting set up is easy. All you need is your account number and our routing number. Find out more at tvacreditunion.com. Join us. Join us now. Federally insured by NCUA. Some restrictions apply. Ask for details. Ted Russell Nissan. We got it going on. Hey, folks, Gerald, that's with Ted Russell Nissan. Listen to me. Full details, just $79. $79 for a full detail? I ain't lying. Our detail shop will detail your car for just $79. Well, what about new vehicle inventory? We got them. Ultimus, Pathfinders, Maximus, Frontiers, even brand new Rogues, all in stock. And remember, you always get top dollar for your trade. Slipping, dripping, skipping, rocking, knocking, it don't matter. Even wreck with a bad car fax. Just bring that sled to Ted right here in beautiful West Knox alone. Keep all right back here at burke tar stadium adam cavalier michael watrang happy to have you on hand let's send it down to the third member of our crew plan to carry for mike Clowney's halftime thoughts 
Thanks, Adam. At halftime, Coach Clowney told me he thinks the defense is playing great. He says the kids are playing with great energy. They're executing well. He says, I'm so proud of the way they're moving defensively. He said offensively, they've moved the ball a couple times, tried to get a few things done, but inconsist inconsistency is still a problem. He says we've got to find a way to put points on the board point blank. In the locker room, Clowney said he'd brag on the defense. He said he'd challenge the offense to go run the ball, be physical, and put points on the board. Back to you. All right. Thank you very much, Leanda Carey. As Carson Newman will get the football to start the second half. We'll see what the Eagles can put together in this one. Always great to send it down to Betty, old Betty. My pal, Betty. Glad to have everybody alongside here inside of Berktar Stadium. As yeah, Carson Newman, you heard about the offensive inconsistency. I, I still think uh, you have to consider the fact that Carson Newman's running backs are just, they're beaten up. And can they get right uh, uh, with a full week off or, or so. And not that you have that. you got to go to Mars Hill next week, and that'll be a tough game. But trying to potentially limit and rest a little bit. Well, good opportunity for Carson Newman to try to clean some things up here right at the start of this second half. Up 13-0. You potentially provide the knockout blow on this opening drive here of half number two, getting the ball. Erskine sends Chad Stark to kick off. Eagles have a deep man, Pearson, who retreats to his goal line to bring this out. Pearson straight ahead along the left, hashes across the 20 and 25, lowers his shoulders and gets up to the 27-yard line. A flag flies in after the fact. Another flag coming in after Luke Simpson got knocked down well after. Hopkins, the guy that knocked down Pearson. But we'll see what uh, sorts out here with this officiating crew. Wait for Max Melton and his word. Got two flags. One came in after the play, and then the second flew in way late. Saw Luke Simpson hit the deck after things were blown dead. But we'll get the official word from Max Melton. Gives us a reminder to let you know that Trilight is a is your hometown internet provider, providing Jefferson City with ultra-fast, ultra-reliable fiber broadband. Let them serve you. Visit trilight.net. A lot of discussion here between Max Melton and this crew. There are two fouls on the play. First, holding number 28 during the return. That penalty is 10 yards and will be enforced. 28's a retired number, so over, who knows who that is. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. On the kicking team, that penalty will be enforced, number 18, and it'll be first down. All right, so you're going to back it up 10 yards, then march it forward 15. Yep. 10 this way, 15 this way. Yeah, Max Melton has left his mic on, but good confirmation. So retreat it to the 18, and then march it forward 15 up to the 33. So... Pretty decent starting field position for Carson Newman. It should be the 33, but they're going to put it at the 32. All right. There you have it. So first and 10 for Carson Newman, left hash at its own 32-yard line. Corbin in the gun. Curtis to his left. Brackett to his right. The handoff goes to Brackett left side, and Brackett... Races around left tackle, gets across the 35 and brought down to the boundary left side by Jamari Smith up at the 36-yard line. Four yards, second and six. Just the second carry of the day for Brackett. His first one went for minus four yards that opening go-round. And Carson Newman trying to potentially go to a little bit more of a ground game here in half number two. Second down, four to go. Corbin, zone read keeper, right side across the 40 and 45. 
past midfield into Erskine territory across the 40 and slung down by Jenkins along the right sideline down at the 37 yard line. 28 yards for Ivan Corbin on the first down. Longest rush of the day for Carson Newman and the longest play of the day for the Eagles as well. And that one opened up big time. There's nobody in white on that side of the field until Corbin was finally tracked down inside of the 40 yard line. First and 10, Corbin, option keeper, left side, pitches King across the 30, tight ropes the left sideline inside the 25, and loses his balance out of bounds down at the 22, a 14 yard gain, and another first down. There's the ground game that Carson Newman's been missing today. Unfortunate for King because he was tight roping the sideline, but because he had so much pace, and his momentum carrying him over there, he eventually had to just sneak out of bounds. First and 10 Eagles, left hash at the Erskine 23-yard line. Corbin out of the gun, double barrel, one wide out to the wide side right, that's Westfield. Corbin will give, dive, King. King bounces it to the right side, a stiff arm to the 15, stays on his feet to the 10, still loose to the right sideline, and out of bounds down at the 6. A Herculean run for T.J. King. 16 yards and a first down before Gravely finally brought him down. Well, think about this. McClurkins had such a good game all day long for this Erskine defense, but that time he was unable to wrangle Carson Newman's side. That is the second time the Eagles have had a double-digit play on this drive. They had three in the entire first half. First and goal from the six. Handoff left side for King. King, hop, skip, spin, down to the one. Kept out of the end zone by Smith. A gain of five, second and goal. Devontae Gaston in on the tackle for Erskine. First and goal from the one for Carson Newman. Curtis and King to either side of Corbin in the gun. Ball on the left hash, and a false start coming on Carson Newman. That's going to race that play. We'll wait for Max Melton's call. False start on the offense, number 59. Phillies five yards, still second down. So back it up, back to the six-yard line. Second and goal from the six. Corbin out of the gun, takes the snap, hands off Curtis straight ahead. Curtis powering his way forward, backpedaling, still on his feet inside the one. He is to the goal line. He is to the inch line. Just shy of the line to make, and it felt like there were 11 white jerseys that teamed up to have to keep him out of the end zone. Five yards, third and goal. Great push, though, by the offensive line to get that penalty yardage back. Third and goal from the one. Corbin takes. Keeper, left side. Corbin lowers the shoulders. He's in. Touchdown, Carson Newman. Ivan Corbin calls his own number, and the Eagles burst into the end zone to take a 19-0 lead from a yard out with 11.48 to play in the third quarter. Well, that's a classic Carson Newman drive. A lot of running games. A lot of big push, and finally, just let the offensive line assert their will, and Corbin sneaks in behind them. Eagles on top by 20 now. PAT is through, and it's a 20 to nothing lead for Carson Newman with 11.48 to play in the third quarter. We're back to Berktar after this on the Eagles Sports Network. If you're looking for official Eagle merchandise, look no further than the Carson Newman Bookstore. With a large selection of Carson Newman gifts and apparel, you're sure to find something to please the entire family. From stuffed eagles to towel sets, sweatshirts, shorts, hats, and slippers, we literally have you covered from head to toe. We have just the item you're looking for no matter what the season. So whether you're an Eagle student, parent, alumni, or fan, shop us for everything orange and blue. Call 865-471-3539 for more information and store hours. We'll see you at the Carson Newman Bookstore. 
Domino's Pizza in Jefferson City has deals for Carson Newman students. Bring in your valid student ID when you order for pickup or delivery, and Domino's in Jefferson City will give you a steaming hot large one-topping pizza for $4.99. That's a large one-topping pizza for Carson Newman students for $4.99 at Domino's in Jeff City. Call 865 865- 471-6700 to order. That's 865-471-6700. Domino's, the official pizza of the Carson Newman Eagles. 11.48 to play in the third quarter. Carson Newman has grabbed a 20 to nothing lead on the Erskine Flying Fleet after Ivan Corbin's one-yard touchdown run capped off a six-play, 68-yard drive. And now the ensuing kickoff is into the end zone from Christian Irwin. Erskine will take over first and 10 with 11.48 to play in the third quarter from its own 25-yard line. Ivan Corbin, a one-yard touchdown plunge. Puts Carson Newman up three scores. And... Erskine comes out defensively with first and 10 from its own 35. Jeffcoat is all by his lonesome in the gun. Jeffcoat claps his hands, takes the shotgun snap, dumps a screen left side, complete but smashed in the backfield. Lyles met immediately by Frank Lee and Jordan Wilson. Lee having himself a day. It's a loss of one back to the 24, second and 11. Second and 11. Left hash for the fleet at its own 24. Jeffcoat takes the snap at the waist. Floats it left side. That's complete Parker. A flag on the play. Parker has first down yardage across the 35 and knocked down by Clements up at the 42-yard line. Good enough for an 18-yard gain if it stands. We'll see what the official word is. On the offense, five men in the backfield. Phillies five yards, repeat second down. So that negates the first down screen pass to Lyles and back it up to the 19 yard line. It's an Erskine team, least penalized team in the sack coming in, eight for 82 now. Second and 16 for the fleet. Parker behind Jeffcoat in the pistol. Jeffcoat claps, takes the snap, hands off Parker straight ahead. He's stuck it the, in the backfield and works his way forward up to the 21. Alonzo Houston filled the gap. Give him two yards up to the 21. Third down and 17 to go. Trying to make it 14, pardon me. Wrong side of the field. 10.07, rolling clock, third quarter, 20 to nothing, Carson Newman leading. Jeffcoat, all by his lonesome in the gun. Five wide, trips to the wide side right. Four-man front for the Eagles. Jeffcoat takes the snap, going to throw. Once it long, along the left sideline. That's dropped. Should have been a pick. That was right into Callum Clements' hands. I don't think you could serve it up any better on a platter than that. And Clements frustrated. Regardless, it's a three and out defensively for the Eagles, but should have been an INT. The only excuse I can give him is it was such a bad pass (laughs) that Clements was thinking about going to the receiver and the ball was going right to Clements like it was intended for him, and it just went right through his hands. Gravely back to punt to Pearson. Gets it off with his right leg, and Pearson will field at the 45, make one man miss, going to bounce it to the right. Flags on the play. Pearson upfield across the Erskine 45, and he's brought down at the 42, but probably not going to stand here. 
Bush stopped him, but flags in the area of holding after Pearson shimmied and shook. We'll get the official word for where this ball is spotted. During the return, holding on the return team number 24. Penalties 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. So back it up, and it'll be first and 10 for the Eagles. Toward the right, hashes at their own 38 yard line. Eagles move the ball really effectively on drive number one this half. Let's we'll see if they can do it again here. 9.33 to play, third quarter, 20 to nothing. Eagles the lead. Curtis and King double barrels to either side of Corbin. Corbin takes, gives Curtis right side. Curtis gets to the edge, but can't really get up field. Harfield drives him out of bounds up at the 39 yard line. Give him a yard. I'll give him two yards, pardon me. Second and eight. 9.20, rolling clock, third quarter, 20 to nothing, Eagles on top. Corbin from the gun, takes the snap, hands Curtis straight ahead on the dive. Curtis powering his way over the right hashes across the 45, up to the 49-yard line. 10-yard tote, Jennings latches onto his waist to bring him down, and the Eagles want to move quickly. First and 10, Carson Newman, right hash at its own 49. Corbin from the gun, takes the snap, hand off Curtis right side, Curtis off tackle, powering his way over the right side numbers into Erskine territory, down to the 46. Harfield rips him down, a gain of five, second and five. Well, now Carson Newman imposing its will on this Erskine group, realizing they have the upper hand at this moment and just pounding the ball. Second down, five to go for Carson Newman, right hash at the Erskine 46. Corbin out of the gun, takes the snap, hands off King left side. King shifty moves, finds a hole. He's across the 40 and driven down from behind by his shoulders in the boundary left side by Gravely down at the 37. That is a deceptive little nine yard gain in the first down for TJ King. I like what the Eagles are doing, run right, run left, get some lead blockers out there and the Eagles doing a great job of imposing their will. Erskine has a player shaken up, so we'll step aside for a break. 8.23 to play, third quarter, 20-0. Eagles on top here on the Eagles Sports Network. Drive safer longer when you visit your local Michelin dealer, Fleet Tire, for a set of Michelin Defender tires. Michelin is the brand drivers turn to for tire options that deliver a safe, quiet, and comfortable ride. Fleet Tire, Woodland Avenue, exit 1B, Knoxville. Based on internal wet braking results versus Goodyear Assurance, Comfort Tread tires and third party wear test results versus Continental Pro Track tires with Eco Plus. See Manufacturer's Limited Warranty Book for details. Fleet Tire, Woodland Avenue. Premier Building Maintenance Corporation. That name means excellence. For over a quarter of a century, the Premier team delivers service with pride, personal responsibility in delivering excellence. And they also back the Ken Spark Scholarship Fund so that a deserving student may be able to enjoy a great Christian education at Carson Newman. For more information, go to cneagles.com. That's cneagles.com. Backed and helped by Premier Building Maintenance Corporation. You are listening to the flagship station for Carson Newman football, AM 620, WRJZ Knoxville. Eight twenty-three to play in the third quarter. It's first and ten for Carson Newman from the Fleet thirty-seven yard line. Eagles trying to play add on to a twenty to nothing lead. A high pitch tossed. It's a pass incomplete for T.J. King. That's an incomplete forward pass. Incomplete forward pass. Second down. On what was speed option to the short side, and you heard Max Melton incomplete forward pass. Corbin Whirly gigging around. And fortunate that it is a forward pass and an incompletion to T.J. King. That looked like a basketball player that was <laughs> trying to lob it over a defender on a fast break and try to give his teammate a little bit of room to work with, and that nearly was an absolute disaster for the Eagles. Second and 10, Carson Newman, left hash at 
the Fleet 37. King behind Corbin in the pistol. Man in motion, Curtis into the backfield. Corbin takes, gives King straight ahead, cuts left, bounces it left side, stays on his feet inside the 30, inside the 25, and scrambles over the numbers left side, down to the 22, where Gravely wraps him up. A gain of 15 for TJ King, and the Eagles move the sticks. Great work by King, good balance, good pace. Sticks the hand in the ground after a few yards to stay up top and get the first down. First and 10 Eagles, left hash at the Erskine 22. Corbin, zone read, keeper, right side. Corbin bouncing around, stays on his feet inside the 20, kicks it outside the right hashes and gets brought down by Gravely and Vest down at the 17-yard line. A gain of five, second and five. Eighth play of the drive coming up that started two and a half minutes ago. Eagles scored on their opening possession of the second half, forced a three and out defensively. And now looking for more consistent offense against the fleet. Wide out each way for Carson Newman. Right hash at the fleet, 17, second and five. Corbin takes, gives straight ahead to Curtis. Curtis powering his way forward over the right hashes. Inside the 15, down to the 14. Steadhouse and Vest with the stop. A gain of three, third down, and a long two to go for Carson Newman. Eagles in the all-black jerseys for the first time in school history and playing at night on a Saturday in October for the first time since 1984. It's been a good night so far. On third and two, they give us to Curtis right side, bounces it to the 10, to the 5, tight ropes along the right sideline and is shoved out of bounds down at the 3. Escorted out by Harfield and Devontae Gadsden. First and goal from the three after the 11-yard rip for Curtis. The Eagles just continue to pile it forward on the ground against the fleet. They have been consistent offensively after halftime. First and goal from the three. Corbin in the gun, double barrel. Takes the shotgun snap. Hands off King straight ahead. King crosses the plane. Touchdown, Carson Newman. T.J. King from three yards out. He finds the end zone for the fourth time this season. And Carson Newman has made it a 26-0 game with 6-10 to play in the third quarter. Can't play any more perfect to start off this third quarter. Offense, two drives, two back-breaking drives, and pure domination up front by this Eagle group. Ends up in a touchdown. PAT on the way from Christian Irwin, and his kick clears, clears. The netting is into the parking lot beyond Berktar Stadium. 27 to nothing. Eagles cruising over the fleet in the first all-time meeting between these two teams. 6-10 to play in the third quarter. We're back after this on the Eagle Sports Network. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. Call 423-585-4000 for the car suitman rate. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. Call 423-585-4000 for the car suitman rate. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. Call 423-585-4000 for the car suitman rate. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. Call 423-585-4000 for the car suitman rate. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. Six ten to play, third quarter, twenty-seven to nothing. Carson Newman leads Erskine, and Carson Newman has scored on its first two possessions of the second half to grab this twenty-seven to nothing edge. Michael Watchman can't ask for much more out of your offense. Not at all. And after what happened in the first half, where so many times they were making mistakes and self-inflicted wounds that pushed them behind the sticks and didn't get the opportunity to push the score out. Uh, this time around in this second half, the Eagles have done just that, taking advantage of those opportunities. And this Eagle group doing a wonderful job in half number two to stretch out this margin. And it's a fine performance on their home field in this dark mode game for the Eagles. All black jerseys for Carson Newman. First Saturday night game in October for the Eagles since 1984. 
Christian Irwin has it teed up between the hashes to kick off to Tavares Walker, who stands between the hashes with his heels on the three. 27-0, Eagles leading the fleet. 6-10 to play in the third. Christian Irwin raises both hands, now extends his right hand. The left-legged kicker strides forward, boots it in the air toward the right sideline, and it bounces in the end zone for a surprise, surprise, yet another touchback. First and 10 for the fleet from its own 25-yard line. So Erskine will come out, and the fleet has really struggled to, to move the ball. They've got less than 100 yards of offense on the day, a team in Erskine that hasn't led since week two and has gone through three consecutive weeks of football with less than 200 yards of total offense each week. Carson Newman's defense has been locked in today against Erskine. So it'll be first and 10 for the fleet from the 25. And Bryce Jeffcoat stays in the game at quarterback. Double barrel shotgun for him with Cato and Parker to either side and a wide out each way. Jeffcoat takes the snap. Oh, he had nobody to hand it off to. And the Eagles storm through. Nick Owens catches the quarterback in the backfield. His running backs abandoned him. And Bryce Jeffcoat had nowhere to run and nowhere to hide from Nick Owens. A gift for the Alabama native. Back to the 21, a loss of four, second and 14. And both running backs just ran away from Jeffcoat. There's nobody to play fake it to, and he was caught in no man's land. Jeffcoat out of the gun, double barrel, Cato and Parker. Jeffcoat takes, give Cato right side, picks his way forward, gets upfield in the boundary right side, and runs into Alonzo Houston, who drives him down around the shoulders. Give him three yards up to the 24, third and 11. Erskine 0 for 7 on third downs today. 5 of 10 to play third quarter. 27 to nothing, Eagles leading the fleet. Third down, 11 to go, for, or 14 to go for Erskine. Pardon me, 11, looked at the wrong thing. Snap back. Jeffcoat throws, hitch right side. That's complete to Yong Lee, but he's wrapped up and slung out of bounds by Alonzo Houston and Jalen Anderson. Shy of the line to make up to the 27 yard line. A three yard gain and another three and out for the fleet. Erskine back to back three and outs to start the second half. They have gone three and out on five of their last six possessions. Gravely will punt it away. Retreating is Pearson. Catches it at the 37. Gets upfield across the 40 in the boundary left side and is wrapped up up at the 43 yard line by Camden Lee. And so Carson Newman takes over first and 10 at its own 44 with 4.16 to play in the Third quarter leading 27 to nothing and a chance to pile on. Well, all you need to know about Erskine's troubles on third down is the average distance that they've had is 10 yards. I mean, think about that. They basically have not gained a yard on average on first and second down to put them into situations, and that last completion was the first time they completed a pass on third down. Very difficult to win games when you're put in those situations. I mean, think about this, too. You've had the one long passing play. That accounts for five-sevenths of your yardage output at present standing. First and 10 Eagles left hash at their own 44. Corbin takes and hands off straight ahead to T.J. King. He's met at the line of scrimmage, and King still on his feet. Ball came out. Eagles recover it. And all that for a gain of a half yard, maybe to the 45, and that's it. So Carson Newman's running backs are putting their finishing touches on this football game right now. And you have to be happy with what Carson Newman has done overall in this game here, particularly in the second half. 147 total yards in that first half, but here in the third quarter already 114. Corbin zone read keeper right side kicks it out to the right, but he will not evade Erskine's defense. Dragged down in the backfield 
by the Fleet's Andrew Melton in the boundary right side. Back at the 43-yard line, a loss of two, and it's third and 11. Carson Newman was averaging three yards per carry in the first half. Here in the second half, it's just below 10. Refocused out of the halftime break is Carson Newman offensively. Leading 27 to nothing against the Flying Fleet with 3.08 to play in the third quarter. A nice night for football here at Berktar Stadium. Corbin. Out of the gun on third and 11, right hash at his own 43. Takes the shotgun snap, rolls left, quickly throws left. That is bobbled and incomplete. Jalen Washington was the intended target along the left sideline down at the 48 yard line. But Gilmore was able to stick a hand in there and dislodge it. Don't know if it would have gone for first down yardage. But regardless, Erskine able to force a three and out defensively and get off the field. Oh, he had Tyler Curtis on a little sit route in the middle of the field with nobody around him. Had he just taken that, had a shot to get the first down. Kraft to punt. It's his right leg into it, a wobbling kick. Fair catch signaled fair for, and Walker grabs it between the hashes at the 19-yard line. And that is where Erskine takes over with 2.45 to play in the third quarter, trailing 27-0 against the Carson Newman Eagles. Seeing his move the ball efficiently and effectively. And let's head down to the sidelines, check in with Leanda for an update on Vontae Brackett. Thanks, Adam. Uh, you've t mentioned banged up running backs. Uh, running back Vontae Brackett has been uh, having trouble putting weight on his right ankle. Director of Sports Medicine Mike Van Bruggen tells me he will be out for the day. Back to you. All right, thanks, Leanda. Hand off. No, Jeff Coat, zone read keeper right side. He's headed to the right sideline and shoved out of bounds up at the 37-yard line by Callum Clements and some flags after the fact, pushing and shoving, and a lot of hankies congregated along this left sideline. We'll get the official word from Max Melton. There's a lot of pushing and shoving after the fact on this near sideline. Carson Newman acted as if that, hey, this is on the fleet. You know, look on the video up in the booth. Kendall Williams was locked up with Young Lee, and Young Lee extended that right hand out to knock down Kendall Williams. Great work by our camera crew to crack, catch that. We'll see if Max Melton agrees. After the play was over, personal foul, number 10, unnecessary roughness. Penalties 15 yards, second down. Proper adjudication by Max Melton and crew there. So Kendall Williams draws a shove from Yong Lee and wipe off that Jeffcoat run. Back to the 21 yard line it goes. So it was a 17 yard run, but after the penalty only nets two, first and 10. Well, the officials are getting together. The way that he said it was that it was second down but it should be a first yeah. down because he indicated that it was a dead ball penalty. Yeah, you take the result of the play. The chains were moved inadvertently, so the result of the play was a first down. Penalty is 15 yards, so it'll be first and 10 from this spot, first down. Good job, Max Melton. That's the appropriate adjudication. Solid work by Max here on Officials Appreciation Week. They do a lot, and Carson Newman, known for its officials through the years. Harold Denton, SAC Hall of Famer, he's the official observer today. He and Greg Parman did some SEC games back in the day. Paul Barger, a Carson Newman alum, he's a SAC official now. You got Ma Matt Hollifield, the uh, husband of former Carson Newman head softball coach, Vicki Kazee Hollifield, he's an SEC official. Carson Newman, known for producing high caliber officials, and we certainly appreciate their work. First and 10 for the fleet. 
Right hash at the 21-yard line, their own 21, trailing 27 to nothing with 2.20 to play in the third. Hand off to Parker straight ahead. Jitterbugs his way forward. Runs into DeAndre Williams, who slings him down over the hashes right side, up at the 24-yard line, a gain of three. It's second and seven. Check that. That was Cato, not Parker. Lock winding past 201 to play in the third quarter. 27 to nothing. Junk formation for the fleet. Got a bunch of guys lined up to the left. Jeff Coat going to throw middle of the field. Incomplete. Lyles, the intended target on a slant route at the 37. Jalen Anderson was step for step with him. And Carson Newman not fooled by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven guys bunched out wide to the left. A secondary offensive line comes back the other way with a slant. Eagles bottle it up. Well, based on the numbers, he should have thrown it to his left. He had enough blockers out there, and it would have been 1v1 on the outside. Instead, he threw it to a receiver that had bracket coverage. Third and seven for the fleet. Jeff Coat alone in the gun, right hash at his own 24. Jeff Coat back to pass, going to air it long along the right sideline. Incomplete. Lyles stumbling in coverage with Jalen Anderson. Fourth down and three to go. Or seven to go, pardon me. That ball just kept drifting to the sideline. Only elephants and hippos have that kind of tail. And that's exactly what happened there with Jeff Coates. Passed down the football field, just kept tailing towards the sideline, and it was unable to be grasped along the sideline. 99 seconds left in the third quarter. Eagles up 27 to nothing and gravely on the boot of the way. Takes the snap. It's a line drive corker that bounces at the 30, 45 high. Jalon Pearson will come up to the 40 and feel, field it, and he will be met immediately. And brought down by Miles Mayhorn. Give him forward progress at the 40. That's where Carson Newman takes over with 90 seconds left in the third quarter, leading 27 to nothing. First and 10 Eagles at their own 40. Well, this is an opportunity to put this game away and allow the backups to get out there. There's been some good post-game traditions with Carson Newman coaches. Ken Sparks, Mike Turner have enjoyed some nice soda pops after the game. And I think Mike Clowney will start thinking, who do I have to smooch to get a cream soda here shortly if the Eagles can put one into the end zone? 90 seconds left. Third quarter, Eagles up 27 to nothing. Corbin out of the gun, takes the snap, hands off Curtis right side. Curtis bouncing it to the sideline, stays on his feet, bowls over a defender across the 45, and gets brought down by Gleason along the right sideline up at the 49-yard line. Nine hard yards for Tyler Curtis, and it's second and one. That play should have been gummed up in the backfield, but Carson Newman's blockers stuck with their blocks, and Curtis burrowed his head slithered through a little bit of defense and snuck out near the first down. There is a flag on the play somewhere. Well, Curtis's lid came off as well, so he has to be aided to the sideline on top of all that. And Max Melton's putting, I think it's his flag, back in his pocket, and the officials are moving the ball back. So will race that After hard After the play run. was over, unnecessary, excuse me, unsportsmanlike conduct on the offense number 26. That penalty will be enforced from the end of the run. It'll be second down. So Tyler Curtis negates his own run. He looked like a laser beam turtle out there, being able to slide through a couple defenders. Sometimes you think slow and steady wins the race. Well, that time he had a little bit of a giddy up sneaking through the lane. And Curtis called for the personal foul after the fact, so that negates the big carry, but the fact that it did happen after the play doesn't inflict the full harm of the 15 yards. But again, Carson Newman penalized 12 times now in the game. It's cost him nearly 200 yards. I think the penalty yardage is just a smidge off on the stats. That's uh, well, that, that's a problem for them. Not yeah, me. I'm just correct. reading. You're just reading. I don't have to do the math. And off left side for the Eagles goes up to the 35 yard line. Just reading, I don't have to do the math. As Carson Newman gives to Don Dunning, freshman out of Nashville, Tennessee, and a product of Dixon County High School. And he gets two yards up to the 35, and that brings up third and 15 for Carson Newman. Don Dunning and Seth Cooper in the backfield with Ivan Corbin. 
Corbin takes, play fake, going to throw long. Westfield, left sideline, can Westfield catch up with it? No, just a tad too long at the 20 to Braxton Westfield. Michael Metcalf was in coverage with him. Flag on the play, though. So we'll check again with Max Melton. Pass interference on the defense number 12. Penalties 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Well, this is time to admit that I am uh, red, green, colorblind, and the, the lighting right now with the hanky and the green no, had no clue where it was. That's me confessing my sins right now. But Braxton Westfield uh, draws the, the we P.I. We have an official's timeout. The chain's broken. We got to have to repair them. So we have an official's timeout. <laughs> it's been a rough day. Rough right. day out there for the officiating. It's, it's hard out in these streets. But it is great weather outside. I mean, you're starting to get into that nice fall crisp in the air. You're starting to get that insight into uh, Thanksgiving. Uh, you know, obviously. What's your favorite part of Thanksgiving, Michael? Uh, basting my turkey. You're a big turkey baster guy? Uh, I, I exclusively baste do, turkeys. Do you, right do you, do you brine? Are you a smoker guy? What's your go-to? I, I mean, especially now that you're you're getting into that that uh, that married life, you actually really do have to start thinking about Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, I, I do, but fortunately, uh, Heather is a terrific cook, yeah. and she takes care of a lot of that. So I might baste a turkey here or there, but uh, she's... Much better than me, so the food's going to turn out a lot better when she takes care of it. You just have your one job. You stick to your one job. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know it's something that you really aren't going to struggle to, to screw up. Moist meat Mikey. That's what they call <laughs> uh, it. Ten years. I didn't know that, man. <laughs> I learned well, something you new. you confessed, and, yeah. and now I confess. <laughs> 31 ticks left in the third quarter. 27 to nothing. Eagles up on top of Erskine. Chains fixed. Great work by this officiating crew to, to fix that broken chain. Corbin throws a screen. Right side. It's complete to Cade Meeks in space. Meeks along the right sideline. Hustles out of bounds in Erskine territory. Down at the 43-yard line for a gain of seven. Melton with the usher. Second and three. And Carson Newman does not need to run another play this quarter unless it so chooses. Two wide to the left for Carson Newman. Double barrel shotgun for this second and three play from the right hash at the Erskine 43. But the quarter comes to a close first. So we'll step aside for a break as well. Eagles in the driver's seat, 27 to earth, nothing on the Erskine flying fleet. This is the Eagle Sports Network. exist by the grace of God for the glory of God. And that is the ultimate purpose in all that we do. First Baptist Powell believes that a healthy disciple is one who gathers with the body of Christ, grows in the grace of Christ, and goes with the gospel of Christ. We encourage you to join us for worship Sundays at 1015 a.m. and learn more about how you can be involved in the life and ministry of our church at fbcpowell.org. It's payday, and on payday, you want to have access to your money right away. When you enroll for direct deposit at Knoxville TVA Employees Credit Union, your money comes to you with no... It's the fastest and most secure way to get paid. Getting set up is easy. All you need is your account number and our routing number. Find out more at tvacreditunion.com. Join us. Join us now. Federally insured by NCUA. Some restrictions apply. Ask for details. Start of the fourth quarter, Carson Newman in control. 27 to nothing on the Erskine Flying Fleet. Eagles with the ball with second and three. Oh, we have a moment, let's send it down. Eh, we're gonna wait for this play. We'll get the Leander down here in a second. Second and three for the Eagles, right hash at the Fleet 43. Corbin in the gun with Dunning and Cooper to either side of him. Corbin takes, play fake. Back to pass, airs it long. Left sideline for Meeks. Meeks can't run under it. It's incomplete with Melton covering him. Third down, three to go. Let's check in with Leanne. Thanks, Adam. The Eagles players haven't necessarily appreci appreciated all of the officiating today. Uh, Tyler Curtis did not agree with, his, uh, with Max Melton's call. 
on his unsportsmanlike conduct. Uh, he had a little discussion with Coach Clowney and Leonard Weaver, and Weaver said, listen, you've got to be smart. Don't even give them the thought to penalize you. Back to you. All right, thank you very much, Leanne. A third and three. Handoff goes right side for Seth Cooper. He's got first down yardage along the right hashes and is smashed down at the 34-yard line after a gain of nine by Gleason. First and 10 for Carson Newman. On Dunning, Seth Cooper getting their first reps at tailback for Carson Newman. A day where T.J. King, Tyler Curtis both rush for more than 70 yards, bit beaten up. And some run for some young freshmen here today. First and 10 Eagles, right hash at the Fleet, 34, 14, 20 to play. Fourth quarter, and Carson Newman in control, 27 to nothing. Eagles trying to pitch their first shutout since 2016. Corbin will give right side for Seth Cooper. Cooper, good hard running along the right hashes. He's got the first down inside the 25, down to the 23-yard line. Seth Game. Cooper continues that lineage from uh, Bill Blunt High School. There's a lot of Carson Newman athletes that played for the Billy Bees. First and 10. Eagles right hash at the Fleet 22. Give again right side. Cooper. Cooper pushes down to the 20 for a gain of three. Second and seven. Ran into the pile led by... Joshua Komodo. This works out well. We talked about the, the injury issues with Carson Newman's running backs. Well, they basically get the entire fourth quarter off. Eagles can go deep into the depth chart to be able to get some of these running backs out there and give them some totes against this Erskine unit. Dunning to the right, Cooper to the left. Second and eight for the Eagles, spotted at the 20 of Erskine on the right hash. Corbin takes, stretch left side, Dunning. Dunning into the second level, lowers his shoulders, gives a stick down to the 10. Don Dunning picks up first down yardage with a 10 yard gain and ramrodded a flying fleet defender on his way to that first down. Carson Newman can pick up a first down here. Following his blocker, Brian Doe around left edge. A good speed hitting that hole. Walker Bunce into the game, and he'll get his first career carry. Handoff straight ahead for Bunce. Bunce tried the right side of the line, and not much there for him. One official has him spotted a yard downfield, another for no gain. We'll see where the spot is. And that was stretched out and stopped by Jeremiah Jennings. Well, Bunce, a yard. Dunning, Cooper, all thinking right now, I want to be on the field to be able to score this touchdown. Second and nine for Carson Newman. Eagles can get a first down here. They've got it at the Fleet 10. Can get a first down without scoring a touchdown. Trying to add to a 27-0 lead with 12 minutes to play in the fourth. Corbin takes the snap, gives Dunning left side. Shake, bake, step through, right hashes down to the five. Tripped up by Jennings and Komodo. Give him a long five, down to the five, third and four. Clock rolling. This drive started back in the third quarter and has eaten up five minutes of time. Eleventh play of the possession coming up. Whitson takes the snap. Hands off, right side, and that will not pick up the first down. Cooper tried it, and he gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it before Komodo and Stenhouse rip him down. No gain at the five. And on comes the field goal unit. So Carson Newman going to try for three. With 10.52 to play in the fourth quarter. Leading 27 to nothing, Irwin. He's made two from 42 today. This is from 22. Snap back, Harris hold down, and the kick is good. So Christian Irwin buries it from 22. He scores his third field goal of the day, and the Eagles have a 30 nothing lead on the fleet with 10.38 to play in the fourth quarter. We are back to Berktar Stadium after this on the Eagles Sports Network. 
We select our insurance companies the same way you do, very carefully. When you work with us, you can count on receiving fast, courteous, and professional service and quality protection through auto owner's insurance. For a no-problem approach for your life, home, car, and business insurance needs, ask us about the no-problem company, Auto Owner's Insurance. Call Bible Insurance Agency at 423-586-4320 or go by 1600 East Andrew Johnson Highway in Morristown, serving the Lakeway area's insurance needs since 1931. Dorm food got you down? Need a home-cooked meal? then Lisa's Country Kitchen is for you. Lisa's Country Kitchen has been feeding Carson Newman students for 15 years. Lisa's has a family-friendly atmosphere all day long, from the morning with her $2.99 breakfast specials to dinner with Lisa's fresh, never-frozen steaks. Carson Newman students get a 10% discount with their student ID. Lisa's Country Kitchen on Route 92 off Old Andrew Johnson Highway. The best food for the best prices. Back at Murktar Stadium, Adam Cavalier, Michael Watrang, happy to have you on hand with our fantastic crew. Spotter producer Andrew Rogers, Leanda Carey on the sidelines, Dave Claybo back in the studio, and then the video stream produced by Danny Wazork, our director, Phil Barger, our replay operator, and our sensational camera crew of Rick Gintahome, Jay West, Mary Vandergriff, and Mia Toribio. Thank you so much for electing to spend your Saturday night with us here on the Eagle Sports Network. A 30 to nothing lead for Carson Newman with 10.38 to play in the fourth quarter. A 12-play, 55-yard drive takes 4.52 off the clock. And Christian Irwin caps it with his third field goal of the day, a 22-yarder from the right hash. And now Irwin with kickoff duties as he'll boot it from left to right. Strides forward, strikes it with his left leg, and uh, this one's into the end zone for a shocker, another touchback. What a weapon that has been for this Carson Newman kickoff unit all year long. 82% of Carson Newman's kickoffs go for touchbacks. First and 10 fleet from its own 25-yard line. Erskine is up over 100 yards of offense on the day. But the Eagles' defense has been... Locked and loaded. Jeff Coates stays in the game at quarterback. He's got Kevon Parker to his left. Twins to the right with a tight end. Dameron in motion. Back and forth across the line of scrimmage. Jeff Coat takes the shotgun snap. Throws quickly. A slant. It's jumped. A pick on his horse to the house. Touchdown, Carson Newman, Cam Henson. Pick six, Eagles 36, Wolves nothing. First defensive touchdown of the year, and it comes from Cam Henson on his first career pick. The junior out of Sewanee, Georgia, jumps the route at the 20 along the left hashes and heads straight away the other way for six. That was telegraphed, and great work by Henson seeing that ball immediately, sprinting in front, and that ball had nothing on it either. Easy interception, and Henson takes it the rest of the way and a defensive score for this group. PAT on the way from Christian Irwin. It is true. 37 to nothing. The Eagles floating over the fleet here into the October night sky. Carson Newman in control, 37 to nothing over the Erskine Flying Fleet with 10.30 to play in the fourth quarter. We're back after this on the Eagle Sports Network. Hey, folks, you're listening with Ted Russell Nissan. Two cheeseburgers, two medium fries, any two drinks of your choice. Tea, coffee, or soft drink. Just Whoa, cut. Gerald, wrong script. I thought something sounded wrong. Here we go. Brand new Ultimas, Rogues, Pathfinders, Maximus, Frontiers, all in stock. Ted Russell Nissan on Kingston Pike. Hey, folks, Gerald Anderson with Ted Russell Nissan. This week, russet potatoes are on sale. Ground beef, just a pound. Thumb a good watermelon. Whoa, 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 Gerald. Wrong script. Here we go. Ted Russell Nissan, Ultimas, Rogues, Pathfinders, Maximus, Frontiers, all new and in stock. Ted Russell Nissan on Kingston Pike. Drive safer longer when you visit your local Michelin dealer, Fleet Tire, for a set of Michelin Defender tires. Michelin is the brand drivers turn to for tire options that deliver a safe, quiet, and comfortable ride. Fleet Tire, Woodland Avenue, exit 1B, Knoxville. Based on internal wet braking results versus Goodyear Assurance Comfort Tread tires, 
and third-party wear test results versus Continental Protract tires with Eco Plus. See Manufacturer's Limited Warranty Book for details. Fleet Tire, Woodland Avenue. Christian Irwin kicks off from left to right with a 37-0 lead in hand after the pick six, and it's a kick that's going to bounce at the six, and Erskine Walker is going to have to scoop it up and immediately race out of bounds. It was like a punt from Christian Irwin, and he pins the fleet back at the 11-yard line. Well, it has been a quality second half for Carson Newman. Led 20 to nothing at the break, or 13 nothing at the break, and have outscored the fleet 24 to nothing after halftime. Erskine 10 Erskine, 10 28 to play in this one. They've got it at their own 11 yard line. Trailing 37 to nothing. Eagles trying to score their first shutout since 2016. Austin Parker is into the game at quarterback and he'll hand off left side to Pinkney, and Pinkney wiggles his way back and forth, and he's fortunate to get back to the line of scrimmage before being sandwiched by Jake Cottle and Jaheim Wilson. No game to the 11, second and 11. How about Carson Newman defensively after halftime? Three and out, three and out, four plays and a punt, pick six. Not too shabby. One first down for Erskine after halftime. That's one first down in the last two second halves here at Berktar Stadium. Jeff Coat rolls the pocket right, throws right. That's complete in space for first down yardage Jeff along the right sideline to Walker up at the 23 yard line. And he's snatched down at the ankles by Jalon Walton up at the 23. Good enough for 12 yards and a first down. Second first down of the half for the fleet. Jeff Coat has not completed back-to-back -back passes all day. He's now 6 of 21. Parker to the left of Jeff Coat in the gun for first and 10 right hash at his own 22. Jeff Coat rolls left, throws left, comeback route, complete up at the 32-yard line to Lyles, nearly to the line to make, but just short as he lands in front of Champ Baker up at the 32. Give him nine yards, second and one. Carson Newman clearly going to be more patient in their attack, but certainly sit back, relax defensively, but Jeff Coat looking his best that he has all day long. Second and one for the fleet, left hash at its own 32. Jeff Coat from the gun takes the snap. Delayed handoff, Parker straight ahead, fighting for that yard. He's got the first down with four progress off left guard up to the 33-yard line. There were a host of Eagles in the mix there. Trevon Barnett was there. Larry Corbin was there. Give him two yards up to the 34 for a first down. Good to see Carson Newman defensively working in a lot of fresh faces. Jet Jones, Cam Henson at the back of the defense. Larry Corbin getting some run at linebacker. First and 10 fleet, left hash at their own 34. Jeff Coat from the gun. Takes the snap, play fake to Cato, rolls right, throws right to the sideline, incomplete to Walker, up at the 45 yard line. Step for step with him was Cam Henson and Brian Sanders. Second down, 10 to go for Erskine. Trailing 37 to nothing with 7.51 to play in the fourth. Carson Newman certainly has recovered nicely from that loss to Tusculum. Had the slow start, but really a quality second half for the Eagles. Jet sweep, handoff right side, Walker. No, Jeff Coat keeps it. He's got good yardage along the left sideline and ambles out of bounds in front of Champ Baker in Carson Newman territory down at the 49-yard line. Jeff Coat pulled it and pulled it well, picks up 18 yards to move the chains. He's been their best runner all game long with his ability to ride those play fakes and Carson Newman's defense on a few First cases. foul it's been exposed. on the defense, number 46, unnecessary roughness. Penalty will be added to the end of the run. First down. Larry Corbin.
Corbin. Larry Corbin called for the personal foul. And it'll be first and 10 for the fleet from the 33. Well, Erskine trying to crack the scoreboard. Carson Newman looking for its first shutout since October of 2016 when it throttled Brevard 47 to nothing. Jeff Coat in the gun. Cato to his left. Twins go to the wide side right. Cato takes the handoff, picks his way left side of the line. Gets into the boundary left side and down to the 30-yard line. Jake Cottle wraps him up. Three-yard gain, give him four down to the 29, second and six. You mentioned the depth that Carson Newman is utilizing here on defense. Well, when you're one of those reserve players and you get your opportunity and your team is pitching a shutout, you want to hold that shutout for the rest of your team, and this is a big drive for this young group. Second and six, Jeff Coat pumps back to pass, steps up in the pocket, he's hit and driven down for a loss of one, back to the 30. Corey Clemson comes through and gets the sack. Third down, seven to go, Eagles get the pressure and the stop. Third and seven for the fleet. Erskine 0 for nine on third downs. Eagles under the night skies of October. And Erskine is going to burn a timeout. Oh, check that. Carson Newman burns a timeout. Timeout. Carson Newman, that's their first charge timeout. 6.19 to play fourth quarter, 37-0. Eagles the lead on Erskine under pretty good crowd given the circumstances on a Saturday night opposite of a... Oh, just a little game down the road in Knoxville. And the Eagles breaking out all black jerseys for the first time in school history. That's a thing where you don't need to adjust your set. Eagles are in all black tonight. Playing their first Saturday night game at home in the month of October since 1984. They're trying to pitch their first shutout since 2016. That was a game against Brevard. If you're a Carson Newman football player, the number or football player, the number that's familiar to you is 22. That was the old bread and butter dive play uh, out of the veer option. Eagles ran that 25 times consecutively to start that game. And Ken Sparks' final year as head coach. It's third and seven for the Fleet from the Carson Newman 30. Jeff Coat takes play fake, back to pass, pressure, dumps right side, diving grab made. It's a completion down at the 27-yard line to Justin Wilson in space, but he can't keep his feet. Falls down on the diving grab. It's a gain of three to bring up fourth and four. One more situations here. That makes, I think, what is that, 0 for 12 now? Erskine on third down yeah. opportunities. They haven't converted one of their fourth down chances either. But this time, it's actually a little bit more manageable. Fourth and time out, five. Erskine. That's their first charge timeout. So Erskine calls for time. 5.43 to play in the fourth quarter. 37 to nothing. Carson Newman in control over Erskine. And the fleet have fourth and five from the Carson Newman 27. They need the 22. Actually might be a little bit more like fourth and four. Regardless, Carson Newman trying to get off the field defensively and preserve this shutout. Larry Slade has done fine work with this defensive unit today, limiting the fleet to fewer than 160 yards of offense. Fourth and call it four for Erskine. Right hash at the Eagle 27. And how about this first field goal of the season for the Flying Fleet. West Hiller will try for a 44-yard field goal from the right hash. The kick is on the way, and the kick is short. No good. Shutout preserved. So Erskine in week seven of the football season 
attempts its first field goal of the year. And Hiller misfires from 44. Eagles keep the goose egg on the board. You know, looking at that, I'm surprised they haven't attempted more field goals. I guess maybe scores of games and stuff like that have played into it, but pretty good looking kick. You'd think that if you had about a 35 yarder and in, you have a shot to make one. Absolutely. Carson Newman running zone read with Whitson. Whitson keeps it himself up the middle of the field. And Whitson able to leg it out up to the 38 yard line for a first down and move the chains. Well, it's funny because Whitson decided to continue to ride the fake even though it was a high snap and the running back had already ran past it. He should have just tucked it up and run up in there. Maybe he could have gotten a couple more yards, but nice work on first down. First and 10 Eagles, left hash at their own 38. Whitson takes, gives Dunning left side. And Dunning positive yardage in the boundary left side up to the 42-yard line, a gain of four. Caleb Keeter into the game at running back now. Second down, seven to go. Carson Newman letting the Carnes product get some run in the backfield. Whitson takes the snap, hands off, right side for Bunce, Bunce, shimmies, shakes across the 45. Flag on the play, Bunce brought down up at the 46. You can see the result of this. According to Max Melton, What's Max Holding. have to say? On the offense, number 58. Phillies 10 yards from the previous spot. Repeat second down. So Tyler Needs, the second generation Eagle, whistled for the penalty. I'm looking at his dad right now, and <laughs> I think he's getting nervous because one more snap from his son, and that's more plays than David ever played. Throw back shoulder, left side, <laughs> complete to Zach Chalmers. We'll have to cut that up and send it. <laughs> I think he David heard me. Did he? Did he, he, he turn around? Yeah, is he listening? He was looking back. <laughs> <laughs> That's one that you really want to say <laughs> to his face. <laughs> oh, that was pretty good. David needs a, a quarterback on all those great 80s teams and arguably a far better track and field coach than he was quarterback. He was a backup on the uh, practice squad, <laughs> right? <laughs> got a few, got a few I'm not gonna, I can't refute you. <laughs> Third and 17. Whitson back to pass. Now Jets middle of the field and gets up to the 35 and that's it for Zane Whitson. Bond with the stop and Carson Newman will have to punt. Although in fairness to David, the, those teams were so good that odds are the game was over by halftime and a good chunk of those with Ken Sparks at the helm that maybe you did get down into what 12th, 13th in the depth chart. <laughs> <laughs> had to switch jerseys at halftime. And you could do that back then because you didn't have to clear all that stuff before the game. You just switch it, put it down on a piece of loose leaf after the game. <laughs> Michael Hare on to punt. Oh, this is going to bounce at the 34. Roll between the hashes inside the 25, and Carson Newman will down it down at the 20. It's nice to see Tyler needs a little bit further up the depth chart than his, uh, his proud papa, who certainly is glad uh, that – Tyler is uh, here at Carson Newman and playing for the Eagles. Uh, David, gonna, he's going to join me the, when, during your Running wedding weekend. Running into the kicker on the defense, 93. That penalty is refused. It'll be first down. So I hope you haven't scared him off with these comments. Well, it won't matter to me because I'll be doing <laughs> you'll, you'll unfortunately be doing more fun <laughs> things. Than the most important day of yeah. your life uh, yeah. thus far. Yeah. Erskine takes over first and 10 at its own 20-yard line. If anybody line. needs a link to the registry, <laughs> you, can, you can let me know, and I can, I can give you a link. I should have dropped that in yeah, the collar. You, you should have. You buy should Watchering have. a Wedding yeah, Gift. Yeah, buy, buy me a wedding Where gift. Where is it? The Knot? What did you uh, do? I think we're on Zola. Yeah, all those sites. I don't think I picked one thing out on that list. Oh, that's hard life for you, man. 
Handoff straight ahead to Parker. He is met in the backfield and slung down by Josh Malloy. A loss of three back to the 17. A fine defensive effort for Carson Newman today against the fleet. Eagles were quick to it in the backfield for this second unit. Second and 13. I love a lot of the starters for Carson Newman's defense. They, they got their helmets either off in their hand or back on the bench. They're all along the front front line cheering on their brothers that work just as hard as they do. They just don't necessarily get that kind of opportunity. Second and 13 for the fleet. Left hash at their own 17-yard line. Jeff Coat takes the pistol snap, rolls right, chucks it right sideline, incomplete. The target in the flat was Justin Wilson up at the 25-yard line, but floated it a smidge too far, and it's third and 13. Eagles looking to complete their shut the shutout, which would be Carson Newman's first since 2016 when it blanked Brevard 47 to nothing. Well, when you're down, like Erskine is down, obviously a, a challenge, but the balance has overall been there, but they've thrown it 27 times for 41 yards. Empty set for Jeff Coat. Five wide, trips to the wide side right, third and 13 fleet. Left hash at its own 17. Jeff Coat back to pass, throws long, middle of the field, too tall. It's tipped, it's intercepted. Cam Henson again at the 45, grabs the bobbled ball and snatches his second pick of the night. Have a day, Cam Henson. Junior DB out of Sewanee, Georgia, has come through with a pick six. And now a bobbled ball for a pick. Well, you want to earn some more playing time. Find the ball. Two interceptions here in this quarter. And what an effort by Henson off of the tip ball, recovering with an open receiver in the middle of the field. First and 10 Eagles from its own 45. Hand off right side for Caleb Keeter fighting for yardage along those right hashes. And Keeter moves the pile down to the 39 yard line, a six yard gain. Henson all smiles on the sideline, setting the Eagles offense up. Let's see how much smiles he has when uh, he, he learns that he's got to do an interview. Sometimes <laughs> those guys, they get excited to do an interview and sometimes those guys are a little bit nervous. So we'll find out with Cam here in a few minutes. I would say Cam Henson's gonna be pretty pumped up. Second and four for the Eagles. Right hash at the Fleet 39. Clock inside of two minutes of a 37-0 Eagle lead. Hand off straight ahead for, let's see, we're down to the depth chart here. Chad Norfleet, the UNC Pembroke transfer, rumbles it down to the 25, and Erskine players shaken up on the play. So Erskine has its player tended to. Norfleet rumbles 14 yards for a first down. And the Eagles doing work here under an October night sky with a 37-0 lead in hand over the fleet, wearing all black jerseys for the first time in school history. Well, you know it's good when the coaching staff off to our left it's just John Kreider and Scott Brock left up here. Everybody else has made their way down to the sidelines to put the icing on the cake of this one. 37 to nothing. Carson Newman cruising. Cam Hinson pick six. Another INT, and with 95 seconds left. Carson Newman letting the reserves do some work late. Eagles have limited Erskine to fewer than 160 yards of offense. First and 10 Eagles. Whitson going to take the snap and kneel down. And Carson Newman will burn out the final moments in this one. Oh, I forgot to uh, mention this last week. 
on the broadcast, but uh, I guess it's a, a better scenario for us this week on the broadcast. Cav, a uh, nice little birthday present for you. I think what was that a few days ago? Could have put your birthday registry on there. I know I you're should've. a big fan. You put yeah. it out. Uh, I need so much, man. Yeah, yeah, Dollar Tree, I think, is where you were uh, registered, if, if I'm not mistaken. Get, uh, some, well, get some good buys there. I think. Game but stuff. you got to go with the video games, uh, man. I mean, Dollar Tree now, Dollar and a Quarter Tree, so <laughs> a little false advertisement <laughs> there. <but. laughs> happy, happy belated. Thanks, bud. you got one coming up here in a little bit. Yeah, I do. Wow. I do, sadly. <laughs> the time I, marches on. Older. Time marches on just as it does in this game. Carson Newman has taken its final kneel down, and in all black jerseys, Carson Newman – has strangled the fleet 37 to nothing. Eagles pitch their first shutout since 2016 and do so in dominant fashion, offensively, consistent work after halftime, and defensively, Eagles locked and loaded from the word go. Final seconds are off the clock, and the Eagles prevail 37 to nothing. Over Erskine. Carson Newman now three and five on the year and two and three in South Atlantic Conference play. Uh, Michael Watrang, defensively, phenomenal work, and offensively after halftime, you like, had to like what you see out of uh, the ground game. Yeah, absolutely great work because going into the locker room, if, if we remember, there, there'd been a lot of missed opportunities, a lot of uh, chances, even that one right at the end of half where you have a penalty pull back a play where Westfield caught a ball and ran it down to the one yard line. You were wondering, could Carson Newman piece it all together? Could they put everything on top at the right time? And the answer in the second half was a resounding yes. Solid performance from start to finish. Defense pitching a shutout. Offense moving the ball with great success in the second half. And Carson Newman bounces back nicely. And now a road trip to Mars Hill next week. I asked it at the beginning of the broadcast. I'll ask it again now. Can Carson Newman do this in back-to-back -back weeks? And we'll find out in the mountains next week. In a game that took two hours and 54 minutes to play, Carson Newman collects its first shutout in a South Atlantic Conference game since 2016. The Eagles dominant winners 37 to nothing over the Erskine Flying Fleet in the first October Saturday night game at Burke Tar Stadium since 1984. The Eagles don the All Blacks and roll past the fleet 37 to nothing. Domino's post game report headed your way when we come back after this on the Eagles Sports Network. Domino's Pizza in Jefferson City and Morristown wants to help feed your business. When you're hungry at lunch, show your business card at Domino's in Jefferson City and Morristown when you make your purchase for pickup or delivery to get 25% off the entire order. That's 25% off your order at Domino's in Jeff City and Morristown when you show your business card. Call 865-471-6700 to get a pizza. Domino's, the official pizza of the Carson Newman Eagles. At InterDigital, we strive to be a leading provider of cutting-edge digital and marketing solutions. At InterDigital, we want to help our clients find success. Our team of technology gurus work together to ensure InterDigital continues to progress forward as technology advances. At InterDigital, we make technology work for you. Visit interdigital.com for IT support, web development, virtual tours, graphic design, internet marketing, mobile app, and film production services. Interdigital, laser focused on your success. Looking to make your home more comfortable and affordable? Maybe a new electric heat pump or a new attic insulation? And don't forget new doors and windows. AEC is here to help. We've got a quality contractor network, easy financing, and ANC inspects every job to assure the highest quality satisfaction. Visit our website at aecoop.org for application, contractor list, and more details. AEC, we're powered with purpose. The game's over, but we're just getting warmed up. The Domino's post-game report hits the air in 60 seconds on the Eagle Sports Network. Premier Building Maintenance Corporation, that name means excellence. For over a quarter of a century, the Premier team delivers service with pride, personal responsibility in delivering excellence. And they also back the Ken Spark Scholarship Fund, 
so that a deserving student may be able to enjoy a great Christian education at Carson Newman. For more information, go to cneagles.com. That's cneagles.com. Backed and helped by Premier Building Maintenance Corporation. First Baptist Church of Powell is a gospel-centered community who loves God and others. We exist by the grace of God for the glory of God. And that is the ultimate purpose in all that we do. First Baptist Powell believes that a healthy disciple is one who gathers with the body of Christ, grows in the grace of Christ, and goes with the gospel of Christ. We encourage you to join us for worship Sundays at 10.15 a.m. and learn more about how you can be involved in the life and ministry of our church at fbcpowell.org. This is the Domino's Post Game Report on the Eagles Sports Network. He buries it from 44 yards out, and Carson Newman wins it in walk-off fashion. Highlights, stats, a conversation with Mike Clowney, and the selection of the Food City Player of the Game are all headed your way. The Domino's Post Game Report is brought to you in part by Domino's, the official pizza of the Carson Newman Eagles. Carson Newman Football is brought to you in part by Appalachian Electric Cooperative. We're AEC, powering the Eagles and Mossy Creek. By the Eagle Club, the family of Eagles. By Pepsi, that's what I like. By Magaha Electric, providing quality electrical services and products to East Tennessee for more than 40 years. By Inner Digital, IT support and marketing, laser focused on your success. By the Bible Insurance Agency, the agency that service built by Aramark, a foundation of fresh food and speedy service. By Lisa's Country Kitchen, the best food for the best prices. By the Tennessee National Guard, a generation of volunteers. By Food City, value every day. By Trilight, dream big with gig. By Quality Suites of Morristown, an official hotel of the Carson Newman Eagles. And by ShopCNEagles.com the official online store of the Carson Newman Eagle. Now back to the voice of the Eagles, Adam Cavalier. All right, back at Burktar Stadium where Carson Newman prevails over the Erskine Flying Fleet. Final score, 37 to nothing. Eagles get the job done and cruise past Erskine in fine fashion. A great defensive effort. For the Eagles, they shut down the fleet. Cam Henson gets a pick six and a lot of good vibes as Carson Newman plays at night in October at home on a Saturday for the first time since 1984. And the Eagles cruise first shutout since 2016. 37 to nothing over the fleet. To tell you how we got here, here's Andrew Rogers. Thanks, Adam. It started in that first quarter as Ivan Corbett in this Carson Newman offense put together a quality drive about half per quarter Westfield to cap 75. Corbin takes. He's going to throw the right sideline. In the end zone. Touchdown, Carson Newman. Braxton Westfield on a free play. Got it with two hands in the end zone. And the Eagles light the lamp first with 5.51 to go in the first quarter at 6 nothing. Carson Newman got back on the board at the 8-minute mark in the second quarter thanks to a block punt. And a first down, only got two yards on that drive, but Nate Kraft was in field goal range and booted home a 42-yard kick to make it 10 nothing. Carson Newman, or Christian Irwin, field goal, I should say, from 42 yards out. The lefty on. Irwin puts his leg into it, and Christian Irwin punches it through. So Christian Irwin buries a 42-yard kick. Eagles get three after the block field goal, and it's a 10-0 lead in favor of Carson Newman with 8.22 to play in the second quarter. Christian Irwin was busy in that second quarter as he booted home another 42-yard kick. This ended the first half. Capping off a six-play, 44-yard drive in that final minute to send Eagles into the locker room with a 13-0 advantage. 
Tight to hold. Brad shot to snap. Snap, hold, Irwin, kick, plenty of length. Does it have the line? It does. Christian Irwin strikes through his second 42-yard field goal of the day, and the Eagles head into the halftime locker room with a 13-0 lead. Carson Newman's offense picked up where it left off and started well in the second half. Ivan Corbin with a one-yard plunge to cap off an opening seven, opening drive of the second half, seven play, 84-yard drive. The Eagles up 20 to nothing. Third and goal from the one. Corbin takes. Keeper, left side. Corbin lowers the shoulders. He's in. Touchdown, Carson Newman. Ivan Corbin calls his own number, and the Eagles burst into the end zone to take a 19-0 lead from a yard out with 11.48 to play in the third quarter. Five minutes later, the offense went back to work and got back into the end zone. Another rushing touchdown. This one from T.J. King from three yards out to cap an eight-play, 63-yard drive that took three and a half minutes. Made the score 27-0, Carson Newman. First and goal from the three. Corbin in the gun. Double barrel. Takes the shotgun snap. Hands off King straight ahead. King crosses the plane. Touchdown. Carson Newman. T.J. King from three yards out. He finds the end zone for the fourth time this season. And Carson Newman has made it a 26-0 game with 6-10 to play in the third quarter. Carson Newman's offense put together again another good drive. This one end started at the end of the third quarter and then went into the fourth quarter. It was a 12-play, 55-yard drive that took nearly six minutes off of the second half. The clock is Christian Irwin booted home a 22-yard field goal at the 10:38 mark of the fourth quarter to make it 30 to nothing. Carson Newman. 10:52 to play in the fourth quarter. Leading 27 to nothing, Irwin. He's made two from 42 today. This is from 22. Snap back, Harris hold down, and the kick is good. So Christian Irwin buries it from 22. He scores his third field goal of the day, and the Eagles have a 30 nothing lead on the fleet with 10.38 to play. I put the Eagles up 30 to nothing, and then on the first play of the following drive, for the flying fleet, Cam Henson with his first career interception. It was a pick six, the first offensive touchdown of the season. And that's today's AEC electrifying play of the game. Jeffco takes the shotgun snap, throws quickly, a slant. In. A pick on his horse to the house. Touchdown, Carson Newman. Cam Henson, pick six. Eagles 36, Wolves nothing. First defensive touchdown of the year, and it comes from Cam Henson on his first career pick. The junior out of Sewanee, Georgia, jumps the route at the 20 along the left hashes and heads straight away the other way for six. That was today's AEC, electrifying play of the game. AEC member owned service driven. Eagles win it 37 to 0. Outscored Erskine, the flying fleet. Two third quarter touchdowns and then a touchdown in the fourth quarter. That pick six and a field goal to recap what was a 24 point second half and route to the 37. Cut out. Take a break. We come back. Player interviews. Adam Cavalier will check with Mike Clowney. Uh, Shopstein Eagles sack scoreboard. All that to come on the Dottos Post Game Report here on the Eagles Sports Network. Insurance, it's about people, not things. It's about security. It's about confidence. It's about relationships. It's about trust. It's about you. As a local independent agent, Bible Insurance Agency can design an insurance program that's just right for you and your family. Give the people you love safe, sound, and secure protection from auto owners insurance. Call Bible Insurance Agency, 423-586-4320, or go by 1600 East Andrew Johnson Highway in Morristown. When you're sick and tired of fast food and need a fresh home-cooked meal, turn to Lisa's Country Kitchen. 
Lisa's been cooking up her fresh, never frozen food for the Lakeway area for more than 15 years. Lisa cares about her customers. You may enter a stranger, but you'll leave a friend. From footlong hot dogs to juicy steaks, Lisa's has the best food for the best prices. Lisa's Country Kitchen on Route 92 off Old Andrew Johnson Highway. The best food for the best prices. Serving East Tennessee for 40 years, Magaha Electric is the perfect choice for all your electrical projects. Magaha Electric specializes in commercial, retail, manufacturing, residential, and industrial contracting needs. Magaha Electric can provide superior service, technical know-how, and realistic budgeting for any size project in a timely, cost-effective manner. Visit MagahaElectric.com for all your electrical contracting needs. Magaha Electric, your East Tennessee electrical contracting source. Back to the gridiron in 60 seconds. One play, 80 yards, and the Eagles are on board first. On the Eagles Sports Network. It's payday, and on payday, you want to have access to your money right away. When you enroll for direct deposit at Knoxville TVA Employees Credit Union, your money comes to you with no waiting. It's the fastest and most secure way to get paid. Getting set up is easy. All you need is your account number and our routing number. Find out more at tvacreditunion.com. Join us. Join us now. Federally insured by NCUA. Some restrictions apply. Ask for details. Ted Russell Nissan. We got it going on. Hey, folks, Gerald, that's with Ted Russell Nissan. Listen to me. Full details, just $79. $79 for a full detail? I ain't lying. Our detail shop will detail your car for just $79. Well, what about new vehicle inventory? We got them. Ultimus, Pathfinders, Maximus, Frontiers, even brand new Rogues, all in stock. And remember, you always get top dollar for your trade. Slipping, dripping, skipping, rocking, knocking, it don't matter. Even wreck with a bad car fax. Just bring that sled to Ted right here in beautiful West Knox alone. Keep. AM 620 WRTZ Knoxville. All right, back on the Domino's postgame report as Carson Newman throttles Erskine by a final score of 37 to nothing. Adam Cavalier joined by head football coach Mike Clowney. Mike, what a night. First Saturday night game in October at Burktar Stadium since 1984. You wear the black jerseys. Uh, a lot of good vibes tonight, and it adds up in a 37 nothing win over the Flying Feet, F Flying Fleet. Let's talk defense. Good Lord. Uh, creating turnovers, forcing three and outs. What did you see from that side of the football today? You know, I thought that side of the ball played with great energy from beginning to end. You know, I thought they did a really good job of executing. You know, I think they, you know, with that crowd, one thing I think you noticed during practice this week is they know they had some miscues last week, you know, after the performance they put together the week before. And so that's what we'll be talking about over and over and over, finding that consistency. So for them to be able to get back on the field and challenge themselves, you know, as well as Erskine today was something that was good to look at. At the half, you told our sideline reporter, Leanda Carey, that you wanted more consistency out of the offense. And what do you do? Two lengthy drives, stick them both in the end zone. What did you see from your team that admittedly banged up in the backfield running the ball uh, pretty much at will after halftime? Yeah, you know, I think that's one thing our kids at halftime felt like, you know, for the most part they were in control of the game, but it wasn't translating, you know. And so I had to be a translator, you know. It didn't matter <laughs> yards and I'm bashing him or, you know, I can control this. If it's not going from here to that scoreboard, then it's not really happening. So they took that challenge and come right back in with the football and go score. You know, um, running backs, I thought, did a good job with that. But offensive line, you know, did a good job of controlling the ball and, and, and helping us move the ball second half. Uh, got a lot of different guys, a lot of reps, especially in the fourth quarter. Walker Bunce, who's been with the program for a, a minute, uh, gets his first career carries. Uh, Seth Cooper, Don Dunning, uh, they run the ball well. Caleb Keeter get, finds the ball in his hands. How gratifying is it to see some of those guys who have been with the program for a minute or two uh, in, in Dunning and Cooper's case, their first years, uh, get to see some fruits of their labor pay off today. That's awesome because, I mean, you you put in so much work into this. And, like, it's competitive nature. And, you know, not everybody's always first or second team. But, you know, that's one of the reasons you come to a program like this to try to be able to have an opportunity to, to get a feel and play in some games. It's good for us as coaches because, you know, as a coach, you know, nobody believes us, but you play what you see, and that's primarily in practice. And it's always good to kind of get guys in a game to see them respond in a game-type environment. Uh, happens defensively, too. Cam Henson has played. Uh, he, it's not like he's uh, an end-of-the-bench guy, but uh, not one of the starters, but a pick six. 
a batted ball that he intercepts to, to essentially seal the shutout. Uh, again, uh, another moment for a guy that uh, is, isn't an every-down guy but has some opportunities and made some massive plays late. You know, Cam's a good player, and that's where, like, you know, he's kind of one of those guys that's been on the fringe. You know, that's a place, like, at safety, you know, once you kind of settle in with some guys, sometimes it's hard to kind of, you know, go throw another guy out there. But, you know, he had an opportunity to play today and made some really good plays for us. Frank Lee continues to just do Frank Lee things defensively. Uh, he was a nightmare, it felt like, for Erskine to deal with. Him and the entire front four, what did you see from that unit? You know, Frank, not played a lot of football, but in starting to kind of get a feel for the game. A couple times I saw him drop off, and I'm, oh, we got Frank dropped back. But um, he did a great job. Um, and then just kind of the other guys up front just continue to work in jail together. You know, those guys work, you know, really. You know, I've never seen a group of guys that work so well with one another, kind of rolling in the game, out of the game, supporting one another, and they're, they're fun to coach. Yeah, I think you. it was maybe in the hallway Friday uh, you and I were chatting and you, you kind of just got to win special teams today. Uh, I think that was your your the, the exact statement. Uh, you block a punt. Uh, you make three field goals, in two, including two 42-yarders. You kick every kick, but the first one was a touchback. And Christian Irwin, another one, he somehow checked at the five like a punt that pinned him inside their 15. What did you see from that side of the football today? That's something we, we talked, like you and I talked about, you know, the, the block punt. We knew that that was something that was there that we needed to capitalize on. I mean, they punt two different guys, and they struggled a little bit there. So we knew that that was something that we needed to capitalize on. But the field goes, like, that's another place that we've been a little bit inconsistent. But to be able to go in hit two long field goals to kind of get ourselves in a comfortable spot to, to where we can get stretched the game, it, I mean, it, it's good. We got Michael Harrell was able to punt yeah. again today. Nate did a good job punting. And so those guys, I think we got as good a group in the country there. And it's just still trying to find that groove with those guys in that room. You know, the guy that you don't ever talk about is Bradshaw. The long snapper, yeah. man, just consistently does a good job for us. So it was good to see us put that together, special teams today. More than 350 yards of offense. The bulk of that comes in the running game. Uh, we kind of touched on it, but break down the consistency after halftime to get things corrected where you had some drives stall out, but in the second half you finished it. Yep, I mean, Tyree, I thought, did, not Tyree, but TC, you can always cross those names up. TC did a good job, had some really tough runs for us. You know, TJ King. You know, the battle of injury to be able to still come back out. I don't know what he finished with, but to kind of have a good, a fair amount of, I'd say, yards probably going 79. 79 coming out of this game. You know, and a lot of those were just like second effort runs. But even when we put the young guys in, you know, they, they had some real hard nosed runs. Um, and, and a lot of that, you know, always kind of goes back to the offensive line. You know, they felt like we could get some movement up front, and they did a good job. But then once we got to the second level, I thought our backs did a good job of blocking for one another, too. You know, you never want to cheat the fans, and certainly doesn't feel like that tonight. Uh, send the crowd home happy uh, with a 37 nothing win. Uh, with the black jerseys at night in October for the first time uh, in 38 years, uh, what do you look to to improve upon? from a performance like this with a tough road game ahead. Mars Hill uh, throttled Emory and Henry today. Yeah. That was something, I mean, this is like we talked about this league. You just don't know what you're going to get from week to week. You know, the thing that we've got to do is we got to come in and we got to do a good job of preparing, you know, putting the game, game plan together. But then the big thing that we've got to do is make sure that we travel well and get physically and emotionally ready to go play a big football game next week. All right, Mike Clowney, pleasure as always. Congratulations. Uh, first shutout for the Eagles since 2016. Winners 37 nothing over the Erskine Flying Fleet. Thank you. It's Carson Newman, head football coach Mike Clowney. We roll on on the Domino's Post Game Report. Cam Henson is set to check in. Frank Lee set to check in when we come back after these messages. This is the Eagle Sports Network. Don't know what to wear on game day? Head over to shopcandeagles.com for all of your Carson Newman Athletics gear. You can find clothing from Adidas, Columbia, Nike, and Under Armour to cover you from head to toe. Shopcandeagles.com also has duffel bags, backpacks, jewelry, pet supplies, and gifts. Don't waste any more time. Prove you are the ultimate Carson Newman fan with the official gear of the Eagles at shopcandeagles.com. Visit today. At Aramark, this year we go back to our foundation. At Aramark, we are great food and great service with great guests. That is the Aramark way. From coffee and maples to sandwiches and Stokely, Aramark is here to produce high-quality food for you. 
a foundation of fresh food, a foundation of speedy service, and a foundation that's built for you, now and for the future. That is the Aramark way. We love to cheer for our home teams, like the Eagles. It means more when we're rooting for the people we know. Did you know Trilight is your home team internet provider? We're right here in Jefferson City, serving the people we know with our ultra-fast, ultra-reliable fiber broadband network. And we'd love to serve you. Learn more at trilight.net or by calling 833-847-0824. Go Eagles! More player interviews and stats come your way in 60 seconds when the Domino's postgame report continues on the Eagles Sports Network. Drive safer longer when you visit your local Michelin dealer, Fleet Tire, for a set of Michelin Defender tires. Michelin is the brand drivers turn to for tire options that deliver a safe, quiet, and comfortable ride. Fleet Tire, Wooden Avenue, Exit 1B, Knoxville. Based on internal wet braking results versus Goodyear Assurance Comfort Tread tires and third-party wear test results versus Continental Protract tires with Eco Plus. See Manufacturer's Limited Warranty Book for details. Fleet Tire, Woodland Avenue. Premier Building Maintenance Corporation. That name means excellence. For over a quarter of a century, the Premier team delivers service with pride, personal responsibility in delivering excellence. And they also back the Ken Spark Scholarship Fund, so that a deserving student may be able to enjoy a great Christian education at Carson Newman. For more information, go to cneagles.com. That's cneagles.com. Backed and helped by Premier Building Maintenance Corporation. Back here on the Domino's postgame report. Nothing a key part this victory was Tyler Curtis, 11 carries, 71 yards. Didn't get in the end zone, but certainly had a day on the ground, averaging 6.5 yards per carry. Our Michael Watchering had a chance to talk with TC after the win. I'm joined by Tyler Curtis and Michael Watchering here for the Eagle Sports Network. Uh, we knew that there were some, some injuries with the running back group, but still a nice performance in the ground game. Uh, what did you see as the team's leading rusher in this one? Um, first off, I'd just like to thank my O-line, Coach Ray and Coach Weaver, because they prepare all the running back. Well, he, Coach Ray prepares the O-line very well, and Coach Weaver prepares us day in and day out just to keep moving our legs, stay low and run the ball hard. So even with injuries, we're just going to we're just gonna do our thing. In the first half, I think you averaged about 3.3 yards per carry as a team running the ball. Second half, it was almost closer to double figures. What changed for the group? Um, going in, you know, coaches talked it over, players got together, we talked through what plays we should run and what we should not, and listening to one of our linemen, Pep, he told us, just follow him, and if we stay vertical, follow him, we was going to get more yards, and that's what we did, and that's what happened. This running back group all year has been a little bit of a running back by committee. Everybody gets their fair share of touches in, in that. How does that keep you fresh throughout the entirety of the game, knowing that anybody can feast at any given point? Man, we feed off of each other. It's like, say, I'm in and I'm not doing so well at first. I'm going to feed off my brother, any of them that runs the ball. As soon as they hit a big play, I'm hyped. And that's just going to make me want to run even harder just to get the same reaction out of them when I run. You mentioned Pep uh, saying, lead, I'll lead the way for you. What about the offensive line here this week and how much they were able to win uh, right off the ball and give you guys good running lanes? Hey. I don't know what Coach Ray's doing with them, <laughs> what they feeding them, but hey, I need them to keep doing it because I love them to death. And trust me, we're gonna take them out. So we're gonna take them out for this type of win. Exciting day because it's a night game, but you also get the black jerseys. What do you think about the clean look here today? Hey, we loved it when they surprised us with this. It was like a costume. And you know, it's October, Halloween time. So this black costume, we're just gonna do our thing. <laughs> we couldn't lose in it. Now back to work next week as you get a road trip to Mars Hill. How do you build off of the momentum of this one getting ready for the Lions? You know, Coach, Coach Kleine has said consistency and just keep our heads straight. Jeff has talked to us. To be a man, you just got to take a win and um, go keep going with it. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to build on what we just did. and We just keep the momentum rolling. We're not going to let this roller coaster go up and down no more. We're going to stay consistent and do our thing. Tyler, thanks so much for the time. Congrats on the win. Thank you so much. That's on the 
defensive side of the ball, Cam Henson made the most of his time down the stretch in this 37-0 victory. He had two interceptions. The first was a pick six, and then the second one helped seal the shutout for Carson Newman's defense. Here's Cam Henson with Michael Watchering after the game. Cam Henson with two interceptions, including a pick six for the Eagles in a 37-0 victory over Erskine Cam. Let's go right to that pick six. Uh, it was a slant pattern on the inside, and you read it perfectly. What did you see on that play? Well, I always was taught to read the quarterback's eyes, trusting my instincts, but I always, I always trusted my brothers first. I thank them for trusting me to make a play whenever my number was called. That second time around, uh, it was a cross, or it was a, I guess, a seam route over the middle. Uh, it gets deflected, and you make a really nice play on that. How did you have the reaction time to be able to haul that in? Well, in football, you're never supposed to give up on a play ever. So if a tip, if a ball is in the air, like like my like Coach Slay says, tip passes are interceptions. So I was always taught never give up on a play. You never know when opportunity comes. Like you said, you never know when the opportunity comes. Well, you seized your opportunity here today. How were you able to stay ready knowing that you, your, name, your number could be called at any minute? Well, you're always supposed to stay ready. You're never supposed to mentally check out of the game ever, even if you're not in support the team, may support the team, because you never know. Like tonight, if you go in, step and make a play, I'm thankful that the coaches trusted in me, believe in me, same with teammates, same with my support system. What's it mean for you to have a game like this after uh, all the work that you've put in through the off season and through the first several weeks of the year? Well, more so not a game like this. I'm just I'm very thankful and blessed that we, that we came out as a team. One I had a great week of preparation, so it's fruits of the labor show tonight. How important was the shutout for this group, knowing that uh, there at the end they were starting to penetrate a little bit, and you held them to a field goal attempt that they missed? Well, we're always we're always taught that they're going to make big plays, but we're a bend but don't break defense, and we knew we knew what we're capable of. So tonight we just, just we had to come out and show it. Get a win here today. Now you are back on the road for the next two weeks. Uh, what's the key to uh, continuing this momentum over the next couple weeks? Same thing. Get back to the drawing board. Another great week of preparation. Coaches coming up with a, another awesome game plan. It's just our job to execute. Cam, thanks so much for the time. Congrats on the win. Thank you so much. That's Cam Henson. Cam, excited about that two-inch performance. Serving East Tennessee for 40 years, Magaha Electric is the perfect choice for all your projects. Visit Come for all your electric. Magaha Electric, your East Tennessee electrical contracting source. We'll take a break here on the Domino's post-game report. Two more interviews to come. We'll hear from Frank and Christian Irwin, the Food City Player of the Game. That is next here on the Domino's Post Game Report in the Eagles Sports Network. Domino's Pizza in Jefferson City has deals for Carson Newman students. Bring in your valid student ID when you order for pickup or delivery, and Domino's in Jefferson City will give you a steaming hot large one-topping pizza for $4.99. That's a large one-topping pizza for Carson Newman students for $4.99 at Domino's in Jeff City. Call 865-471-6700 to order. That's 865-471-6700. Domino's, the official pizza of the Carson Newman Eagles. What is it that makes you powerful? It's not only having a voice, but knowing that it's heard loud and clear. We understand knowledge can change your life and that energy will continue to power it. And because you're part of a Touchstone Energy Cooperative, we're always listening. Because you're more than just a customer. You're a member. And what's more powerful than that? AEC, bringing the winning game plan to your team. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. Call 423-585-4000 for the car suitman rate. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. Call 423-585-4000 for the car suitman rate. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. Call 423-585-4000 for the car suitman rate. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. Call 423-585-4000 for the car suitman rate. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. This is the Eagle Sports Network. Back to the field after 60 seconds from your local stations. First Baptist Church of Powell is a gospel-centered community who loves God and others. We exist by the grace of God for the glory of God. And that is the ultimate purpose in all that we do. First Baptist Powell believes that a healthy disciple is one who gathers with the body of Christ, grows in the grace of Christ, and goes with the gospel of Christ. 
We encourage you to join us for worship Sundays at 1015 a.m. and learn more about how you can be involved in the life and ministry of our church at fbcpowell.org. It's payday, and on payday, you want to have access to your money right away. When you enroll for direct deposit at Knoxville TVA Employees Credit Union, your money comes to you with no waiting. It's the fastest and most secure way to get paid. Getting set up is easy. All you need is your account number and our routing number. Find out more at tvacreditunion.com. Join us. Join us now. Federally insured by NCUA. Some restrictions apply. Ask for details. AM 620 WRJZ Knoxville. Back on the Domino's post-game report in the Eagle Sports Network, Andrew Rogers here wrapping things up. Kirsten Irwin had a good day for the special teams unit. He booted home three field goals in this shutout 37-0 victory. Michael Watchering talked with Carson Newman's kicker after the win. Two. Nothing here in a night game on Saturday at Berktar Stadium. I'm Michael Watchering, joined by Christian Irwin. And Christian, haven't had always the opportunities to get out there as a place kicker, but you come in and uh, flourish. Three field goals that you buried. Uh, what was your mindset on that first kick? I uh, just do what I know how to do. Um, uh, my my uh, sophomore year um, didn't didn't have the best year. Uh, I think it was four for twelve. Um, and then, and then uh, Nate came back uh, after his season in 2019. He, he's been burying them in practice. And uh, I just um, got the call from uh, uh, Coach Duncan. And
Union an overtime victory over unranked Bowie State, 27 to 24. Only one game currently going on in the top 25. Delta State ahead of West Alabama, 20 to 7. That's a fourth quarter score. A couple of other games of note: number eight Harding upset by Henderson State, 15 to 14. Harding, number eight in the country, falls today. Pittsburgh State. Defeats Lincoln 49-10. to Pittsburgh State ranked 6th in the country. Gets the victory. Sioux Falls over Mary 41-27. Sioux Falls ranked 12th. Number 3, Angelo State wins over Western New Mexico. Final score 52-13. to Once again, our final 37 for Carson Newman. Nothing for Erskine. Just a couple of numbers to run you through before we wrap up. The offense... Had a pretty good day, particularly on the ground. The Eagles nearly gained 400 yards in this victory with about 300 of that coming on the ground. T.J. King, Tyler Cor Curtis, Ivan Corbin, the top three rushers for the Eagles, while sub several others got involved in the running game. In fact, 11 different guys carried the football for Carson Newman in this victory. Corbin, 6 of 18, 72 yards, a touchdown, and an interception in this effort as well. The defense was phenomenal. They forced Bryce Jeffcoat into 19 incompletions, passer rating of 26, and his completion percentage was 30. He was 8 of 27, two interceptions. Both the picks came late from Cam Henson. One was returned for a touchdown, and the ground game really wasn't much better. Erskine only had 92 yards on the ground unofficially at 133 total yards of offense. The defense was phenomenal and, and in fact only allowed one third down conversion from the Flying Fleet in this shutout victory. The Fleet were 1 of 12 on third down, 0 of 2 on fourth down. Just a quick scoring summary recap. Again, the Eagles scored touchdown in the first quarter, two field goals in the second to enter the locker room up 13 to nothing. The offense put together two quality drives in the third quarter 84-yard drive, 63-yard drive, both rushing touchdowns. The cap the drive made it 27-0. Christian Irwin field goal in the fourth quarter. And then Cam Henson, 31-yard pick six to cap off what was a phenomenal defensive performance from the Eagles to get the victory this evening. Thank you for joining us throughout today's game. The Eagles are back in action next Saturday, a road matchup with Mars Hill, a team that is playing some pretty good football, got another win today against a so solid Emory and Henry team. That's who the Eagles get to end October. Both of those are road October matchups. So a tough stretch coming up for the Eagles to wrap up the month of October. Next Saturday's matchup is a 1 p.m. kickoff against Mars Hill. Andrew Rogers signing off here on the Domino's post-game report for our entire crew. We thank you for joining us throughout today's game, whether you joined us in the pregame, during the game, or just catch us here on the bare end of the post-game show. We thank you for joining us throughout today's game. For the entire crew, Andrew Rogers signing off. Eagles win it 37 to nothing. And we'll be back at home on November 5th, 3 p.m. matchup with UVA Wise. We'll talk to you next week at Mars Hill. Have a great rest of your Saturday. You've been listening to the Domino's Post Game Report on the Eagles Sports Network. Today's game has been brought to you in part by Appalachian Electric Cooperative. We're AEC, powering the Eagles and Mossy Creek. By Domino's, the official pizza of the Carson Newman Eagles. By the Eagle Club, the family of Eagles. By Pepsi, that's what I like. By Magaha Electric, providing quality electrical services and products to East Tennessee for more than 40 years. By Inner Digital, IT support and marketing, laser focused on your success. By the Bible Insurance Agency, the agency that service built. By Aramark, a foundation of fresh food and speedy service. By Lisa's Country Kitchen, the best food for the best prices. By the Tennessee National Guard, a generation of volunteers. By Food City, value every day. By Trilight, dream big with gig. By Quality Suites of Morristown, an official hotel of the Carson Newman Eagles. And by ShopCNEagles.com, the official online store of the Carson Newman Eagles. The executive producer of the Eagles Sports Network is Matt Pope. Producers Adam Cavalier, Michael Watrang, Ian Johnson, Andrew Rogers, 
Caitlin Jones, and Danny Wizarek. I'm staff announcer Ernie Anderson. A special thanks to Carson Newman and University President Dr. Charles A. Fowler. Stay tuned to these stations for information on our next presentation of Carson Newman Football. In the meantime, visit cneagles.com for recaps, highlights, and interviews from today's game. This is the Eagles Sports Network. Thank <laughs> you.